Well, there you are. <laughs> What's happening? This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. It's live. Greetings, fellow humans, cyborgs, mutants, and what have you from around the world. Very excited about today's show. I hope that you are as well. It's going to be great. We're going to get into it today. What's happening in Scotland? Robert, how are you, buddy? What's up, D? Come on now. RS70 is back in the mix. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got his ban lifted from YouTube. Here we go. You know? Happy Easter. Happy Pesach. To all my Jewish brothers and sisters out there. You know? Gina B. Happy Easter. Excited. Love you, Gene and Bordello. Fantastic fun. Darn tootin'. You're darn tootin'. You know, what's up, Stuart? Larry Kelly, what's up, bro? What's happening up in Massachusetts, B? You know? What is going on? You know what? You, you know what? Let, let's start off with this. We're, we're going to get into we're going to get into all kinds of stuff today, but um, you know what? Let's just let me just let me just hey. let me just hey uh, hey happy Easter hey, everybody. Since happy when are you shaving Easter. your head? Since when are you shaving your head? Well, I figured I'd get rid of the afro. It was just getting too long. See, I'm Jewish. I get a Jufro. It's uh <laughs> guess that didn't get any response, huh? <laughs> nah. It's a beautiful day. Happy Easter. Hey, you know what? Has one year gone by since you sent me one of these pictures? Huh? Ah, there we go. Yep. Every holiday, that's a staple at the, the Messina house. Now, I'm, I'm, unfamiliar, yeah. I'm unfamiliar with some of these items. Okay, what do you what do you not know? What's that on the far right? Is that artichoke? This is artichoke. Yeah, we got some. We got some artichoke. We got a little cheese. We got pepperoni. We got some peppers. Some peppers. We got some some Colby Jack cheese there. We got some pepperoni, and of course some black olives. Yeah, we have we have uh, we're big on antipasto at our house. And I uh, before I don't, know if I'd met, I don't think. Some peppers, some yeah, all right. If, if you don't like the artichokes, artichokes are wonderful. I don't even know what an artichoke is, bro. Ah, come on it's now. Not even like in my universe, bro. That's ah, like well, that's like shit you guineas eat. I don't eat shit like that. Hey, listen, you know, Sicilian. What can I tell you? Here's another. That, now ah, this look at that. Look at yeah, this. That looks, that looks good, bro. You got a little eggplant rollatini right there. Eggplant rollatini. Is that right? Yep. Yep. You got some stuff. Uh, look, you got some stuff. Stuffed, stuffed mushrooms, stuffed, stuffed mushrooms. mushrooms. Okay, we got some chicken there, of course. So we got a little chicken cutlets for the kids. Uh, you know, we got shouting some out Daniel uh, Danielle Lepage. Is that is that da how do you pronounce that? Cacciatore? Is that how you Cac pronounce that? No, that's that's not that's that's rollatini. We cacciatore, cacciatore we do sometimes <laughs> as well. What's up, Danielle? <laughs> all the girls I, are chiming in. Lori Dawn, all, all, all our all our friends. Oh yeah, here. all our friends. Everybody, come over. Place. Everyone, come to the Messina house. Come on over. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, that's cool. Oh man, yeah. Now uh, I got to see I got to see Danielle the other night. We were hanging out at uh, Steve Psycho's backyard. Is that right? Yeah. Steve awesome. Psycho, yeah. Huh? Steve Psycho from the Psychos. Hey, you know what we? You know what we need? I'm gonna put this out there to everyone. Um, we have a, a Bowery Electric show coming up on in August. It's August 14th, I think think and um we're gonna do both floors again and like rampage fest we decided we need a name you know we need we we need a name for this fest the last one was rampage fest so any suggestions for what the name of this fest should post them up and post them up in the chat room now we need a cool name for this fest all right you're on it's Sunday. Post up. Scrub That's fist. It. Put them to know. work. Hardcore summer rodeo. 
<laughs> it's kind there of, we go. It's kind of funny, actually. She's going to have to wear a cowboy hat for that one. It's kind of funny. People would just be like, whoa, 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 whoa. the New York Hardcore Chronicles and Women of the Pit presents the Hardcore Summer Rodeo or the Distress Fest. That's kind Bear of cool. bro. Holy shit. What's up, man? T- Distress Fest. The wow. gluten free, the gluten free motherfucker fest. All right. Haven't seen Bear Bro at a show in so in a very long time. Yeah. Hey, let's do photo of the day while we're at it, while we're doing a- this. Let's absolutely. Let's multi, absolutely. Let's, multi, let's multitask. Ladies and wow. gentlemen, speaking of the Bowery Electric, here is photo of the day. The two tier terror fest. That's not bad. Hardcore mayhem. Well, it's playing in a little straight there. The GFM fest for sure. That's that's kind of funny. You know. Well, I spy Howie Abrams in that picture. I see him there in the corner. What do we got here? Yeah. Wait, I don't see how we... Oh, yeah, I see him. There he is. I see him. He's on loose side over there. He's on loose side? Loose side. Loose side. Loose side. <laughs> He's on loose side. Loose side. Is it Genesis? <laughs> is it someone's... Sc- Yo, it's funny. We were talking about Genesis today. Uh, to, I was talking to one of my one of my guys about... about um, the fact that Genesis just went out, out on tour with Phil Collins sitting in a friggin' wheelchair, like, uh, like, th- and then the reviews yeah. were like, it was awesome. Like, I think this is his last tour. I think this is oh, it. You, dude, you think? <laughs> I know that he did their last American show. I know that. Imagine that. Like yeah. Mick Jagger. Was, that, that's embarrassing. Like, what the hell oh. do you think? The crazy thing is Mick Jagger is older than my mom, and he's in phenomenal shape. Jagger's a like, freak of nature. I think he's 79. Jim Gibbs says, I just saw Rebel Matic yesterday. Thanks, Drew, for letting me know about such an awesome band. Where, where did Rebel Matic play yesterday? Yeah. All right, here's another here's another photo. I like this one. This one has like you know, every, I, you know, I love those hardcore pictures when people are like, you know, feel it. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. You you know who that is? You recognize it? That's Jimmy Ferrari. Yeah, it's Jimmy Ferrari. Yeah, he's and then there's another is that rap bones right behind yeah, him. Rap bones is next to him. <laughs> yeah, ah, this is great. So funny. This is this was a worst oh, band a, ever. Is that right? Sick of it all's wow. the worst band ever. Bro, I don't wow. know. Wow. I don't know what you're smoking, punk and oi, but I'm sorry, sick of it all is far from the worst band ever. I could think of a lot of other bands. Yeah, that, that's for that sure. We, <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah. Actually, come to think of it, Lou is wearing a uh that's a Howie shirt right there, the Merciless Radio shirt. Right. Right. Here's here's another one. That was such a good night. Yeah, it was a great show. That was a great show. Yep. So what is this? What is this? Well, come on now. We all know what this is. This is sick of it all. The worst band ever, apparently. The um... We are the worst (laughs) band ever. This was uh, December 2019. Oh, Rebel Maddox on tour. Oh, wow. That's okay. cool. Yeah. This was 2019, obviously, the Bowery Electric. Right. And this was um, Sick of It All, Agnostic Front, uh, which is back. That tour is back happening again, thankfully. But uh, seeing those two band in our what I could proudly say, our room now, because this is our room now. We, yeah, this, you know, this, like, this is such an incredible place to see any band, but to see these guys, the energy that they bring to such, to this room, this was such a phenomenal night. And uh, 
I mean, look at it. You can just see it. That's right. That's our guest today was at that show. Yes. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. As a matter of fact, he was over in the corner by where Danielle was standing. And, uh, Hey, hey, by the way, I want to apologize if anybody hears my radiator clanging because (laughs) I live in a pre-war New York City building where where the radiator clangs until about July. They don't turn the heat off in this building until July. Is that one of those radiators where if you lean on it, you get like a third degree burn? Oh, yeah, bro. (laughs) Dude, it's it's either 8,000 degrees and you have to open the windows up. Like, Oh, that's funny. Dude, my girl's like, open the window. I'm dying in here. Oh, that's funny. I saw you. I saw you and your girl last night at the uh, the last stand. Kings never die show. Yeah, you know what? I got got a shout out. Uh, got a shout out, Michael Scandato. Always, from the last always. Band. And I learned a little bit last night that the last stand and Inhuman and Shutdown, they're all basically variations of the same thing. It's very incestuous. Yeah, so yeah. Joe James there last night. He was there. Yeah, I saw a lot of people there last night. That you know, that was actually my first time in that room. That used to be Arrogant Swine. That place sucks. And, um... <laughs> How's that? How's that? that place sucks. Worst venue ever. No, that's Kingsland. Their other that's, venue. Uh, that's, that's their funny. other venue. You know. Oh, that's funny. I thought it was. I thought the bands you know brought it though, and you know, you know. You know what? I'm going to go off a little bit. You know, you know what? I don't understand about that frig- about this guy's venues. He, they never have lights that are that are on the band. It's like the lights are like going into the audience. So as as you're in the audience and you have lights in your face, but the guys on stage are in the dark. Yeah, I, I, I did notice I the lights were a little sketchy there. What you know, the fuck, man. Like who? Do, what? Like what kind of? Like who's? Yo, I got to shout out Lincoln. What's up? From across the pond. What's happening, brother? Hmm. I haven't seen you in a minute. You know. Yeah, bro. You know, you know what? And and what's up, Michael? Hey, listen, got to shout out. Yo, know, got to shout out, Michael and um, Grunge and Grime uh, Soap Company. Oh, that's right. We got to start. We got to. Uh... It's my jam now. This nice. is the black. This is the black forest right here. I don't even know. You know what? I don't even know why I'm even. I don't even know why I'm even talking to you people. I should be in. I should be in the shower, <laughs> sticking this up my ass. You know. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing here? You know, <laughs> I got nothing to say to that now. Put some soap up your ass, will you? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That was, hey, and also before- worst band, worst band ever for me is a toss between M- M- Muse and Radiohead. <laughs> Dude, I gotta say, worst band for me would be like, I'd put Fish up there. Like fish, really oh. bother, fish and you actually you know. like. And the funny thing is, you like jam bands and you like the dead. For I you like not to like fish, fish you know. I saw fish and I, they were so bad, man. It was terrible. You know, you know the the worst live band I ever saw was was a it was a tie. I was shooting. I was shooting. You know the band Everclear. Yeah, I was shooting Everclear, and the band that opened for them was that band Marcy Playground. Remember, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sex yeah, and Candy. That. I wanted to like eat gl- broken glass just to just so I could get out of there. It was terrible. But the worst band I think I've ever seen live was The Strokes. Really? It was so incredibly boring. And I saw them at the Little Steven Garage Fest right between the New York Dolls and the Reunited Stooges. You and- know what the worst you know, you, refer- you know what? The worst band I ever saw Every friggin' hardcore band I see now is basically <laughs> they just top each other. The worst friggin' band I've ever seen. You know what? Wow. Never. I don't go to see hardcore bands for like, you know. I basically Shh. listen, I go to hardcore shows to bullshit with my friends and, and hopefully they have decent food at the venue. I just not be coffee. interrupted by the music. <laughs> yeah, right. God, <laughs> shut this crap off. You know, every band just trumps. And, and suckiness, you know. <laughs> hey, let's talk about uh, let's talk about our next four shows. Yes, coming up on Wednesday. Coming up oh, on we got Wednesday, some good ones coming Doug up. Karen from Field Day, Descendants, Cottonmouth Kings, and Dag Nasty. A week from today is the Lamore retrospective. Lamore. Wednesday, Alex April Kane. Co- that's going to be good. It's Alex Kane, right? 
Uh, Carl April twenty seventh, Carl Kennedy. It, it's pronounced Kennedy, right? Kennedy, yeah, Carl Kennedy. Kennedy, right? Uh, from the Rods, and he was also the Megaforce uh, in house yeah. producer. The Rods, the yeah. Rods, and then two yeah. weeks from today, Mister Caves from Lords of Brooklyn, graffiti legend, will be on wow. the show. Yes, I'm Caves really looking forward to the Le- that Lamore show. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we got good stuff happening here. Let me tell you. Listen, two years into this motherfucker. I, Isn't it I, crazy, I be... right? It's crazy. Two years. The uh, Before I forget, I want to wish okay, happy here, birthday to our, well, our friend well, Drummer Mike, by the way, from Car Bomb Parade. Oh, yeah, right. Happy birthday, Mike. Um, <laughs> worst band that. nominees. Yup, Fish, Dinosaur Jr., Tiny Tim. Tip-toe. Oh, I like tool. Dinosaur Jr. I got no, I got no beef with I Dinosaur Jr. Stuck. I <laughs> suck. <laughs> Legion 88, Poison. Poison? Well, Poison, come on. That goes without saying. At the drive-in. You don't like Dinosaur Jr.? old man's car. So, baby, like- talk dirty to me, dude. Talk dirty to me. Oh, <laughs> I, I like Dinosaur yeah. Jr. Jay Mascus. Yeah. You know. Oh, I got a friend here. Jay, De, Jay Damascus. Hello. You know. All right. Cool. All right, let's get our guests going here. Yes, let's do it. I'm very uh, excited for this one. One of my favorite live bands ever, by the way, Gogo Bordello. So this is going to be a really good show. Absolutely. We'll talk to you in a bit. Absolutely. Happy Easter, everybody. That's right. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, the Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, Generation Records, 126 Hardcore Clothing, and the Organic Grill. Organic Grill is a vegan restaurant located, now located, at 133 at 3rd Street, right at the corner of 6th Avenue, right next to the Blue Note. They are moving. Uh, Apparently, they're opening up next weekend. Listen, what can I tell you about the Organic Grill? They're moving to a bigger spot, a nicer spot. They'll have your... For all you gluten-free motherfuckers, they'll have your your, your veggie burger and your unhot dogs and all that. So... Is it is it 13 3rd Street or is it 133 3rd Street? Hold on. Vlad just texted me before. Let me see what it is. Hold on. End of April. They're getting closer. Is it 1 133 West 3rd Street? That's where Organic Grill is opening. So there you go. Also, come on now, Chain Reaction Records. And skateboards located in Lakewood, Colorado is the Rocky Mountain headquarters for all things punk, hardcore, and metal. Established in 2014, they have the largest selection of records, CDs, shirts, stickers, patches, and accessories between Chicago and Los Angeles. From the pit to the ditch, they got your back. Get in touch with them at www.chainreactionrecords.com. How about, last but not least, before we bring our guest on, Chacho's Tacos, located in Corpus Christi, Texas. Chacho's Tacos opened their doors in 2001, home of the almighty Chacho's Taco. They cook up an incredible home-style Tex-Mex food, and this month they're celebrating their 20th anniversary. They've been supporting underground music since the beginning in their own words. We ain't stopping anytime soon. Touring bands that play Corpus Christi swing by and get a home-cooked meal at Chacho's Tacos. We got you. The underground scene will never die. Please follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. That said... Let me make sure everything's okay in the chat room. Uh, yes, it's it's right near Washington Square Park. Yeah, it's like a it's it's right across from the old Bleaker Bob's actually. One one third one three three West Three. All right, that's where it's happening, Gina. Um, that said, all right, let's clear the deck and let us bring our guest on. Here we go. Put your shoes and socks on, kids. Today's guest is a Ukrainian-born singer, composer, DJ, and actor. He's known for his work with the bands Vinegar Tap, The Fags, Epitaph, J-U-F, 
the Kolpakov Trio, and of course, for over 20 years, Gogo Bordello. We are honored to have him on the show in these turbulent times. Please welcome, coming at us from lovely, my home, Manhattan Island, Mr. Eugene Hutz. Brother! What's happening, man? What's Where do happening? we begin, huh? Yay. How are you, buddy? Yeah, all right. You know, um, <clears throat> fighting through BS on all fronts. It's a crazy world right now, man. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I mean, where yeah. do we, you know, where do we begin? And Well, you know, I think we'd be amiss to not, to not, uh, uh, you know, uh, address, you know, to, to just sort of like talk about, you know, just music. And, and I think, we're, what do you say? We're, we're, let, what do you say? We go back and forth a little bit. So let, let's start with what's the latest. What's up with you? Um, uh, you know, what's the latest with you and the band? What's the, and, and in general? Well, the band is completely immersed in, in what's happening with Ukraine. And so, you know, it's like, we actually just finished an album right before the whole thing broke out on February 24. We literally were master, we're about to master a new album. Oh. And so, yeah. And of course, a lot of things needed to be done to address what's happening now. And, Punk is exactly the kind of music that gets on top of this right away. So I've written new things and been making videos with guys who are like right there in Ukraine right now and, you know, mm -hmm. writing inspiring, tangibly, practically, you know, music that serves the purpose, you know, really, really just does that and get them getting the collaborating with musicians from there believe it or not it's still it's it's happening i mean you know just got vocal tracks from my friend Sergei Jodan from from Kharkiv you know just mixing now mixing who, uh, is that is who produced that new record Walter Schreffels there you go um yeah someone you how was might how was know. how was that uh, was was a kind of a naturally evolved situation. I mean, we've been on tour together and, uh, you know, and uh, I mean, it's like, you know, I, you know, I picked up a couple of records out of the milk crate. But yeah, like, there you go. More than one record of Walter, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, that's uh, that's that's, uh, that's a classic right there. And, and, and he wrote everything on that record, right? Yeah. He, he, and, yeah. And when Quicksand came out, that's also was like my answer to everything for, you know, a couple yeah. of years. I was just kind of bringing it all, everything that I loved about things at that time. So, and plus, you know, he's got that like real knack for understanding songwriting and... Yeah, it's a great you know, songwriter. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we on tour already connected over this, how much like hardcore is how much great actual songwriting is in hardcore music that kind of gets like uh kind of buried in the other antics of it but how much woody guthriness is in there in it now yeah. now, now, now you're talking my language bro because I've, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've always said you know for me you know uh hardcore to me is 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 a form of folk music you know i, I that's the way yeah. That, that you know, and, and and bands like, and I've said this on the show many times, bands like Agnostic Front and 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 Sick of It All, and to me, this is a form of Americana. You know, this is like it, it, it and and I recognize it as, as it's folk music, really. It is, and yeah. um, even just the whole ritual of it, if you observe it from a little bit of a distance, which yeah. I had opportunity to do because you know I'm a transplant. And when I crush landed into, you know, on the East Coast, I kind of hit this kind of like a perspective that was like kind of like anthropological, you know, and I was just like, wow. I mean, I was born and raised in a city too, key of, you know, big city and, you know, also, set, you know, very Soviet and blo cement blocks projects. Yeah. My, <laughs> my district, like no fucking trees, just sand and cement blocks. 
I, I saw that in, the, in a documentary I saw when you went back to the place that you that you grew yeah. up in, and it was just real Soviet block. It was like, you know, I guess in, in the planning stages, like, you know, back then in the planning stages, they didn't think, you know what, let's give them a park. You know, that was. I think well, only now, like like three two and a half years ago, was last time in Kiev, and uh, there was a uh, you know trees are kind of like coming up in those areas, but it's. <laughs> Yeah, it's still like, and it's just hardcore urban environment. And observing it like here, I kind of saw it like just people are kind of recreate with hardcore music. People are like recreating the dance around the, the ancient dance around the fire. Yeah. They kind of still found a way to do it and kind of to come on top of this like kind of a deadening environment, you know. Well, hardcore it's very ritualistic, you know, and 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 which which you know, so's folk music and 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 your music, your music too. It, it's it's community and culture, man, and and right, and, and that's like I was and I was goofy. I was goofing before at the beginning of the show, saying I go to hardcore shows, you know, to to, to bullshit with my friends. <laughs> I and and like I like I don't I don't you know who cares who's playing, you know, and and I was making a joke of it. But there is some truth to it because for me, for me, what resonates for me is community and culture, man. You know, that's it is. And that's why it was so fucking uh I guess it was because that's what it was so welcoming towards me, who was like, it's not like when I came here, I was in Vermont, you know. Just New York City was so packed with refugees at the time. They just bounced us to Vermont because... I mean, we're, I mean, we're, we're jumping around, but how did you end up in Vermont? Like from... Now I, I know I know, I know, know you went through... Um, you went through... Uh, I think... Correct me if I'm wrong. You went through Poland, Hungary, yeah. Austria, and Italy, yeah. and then came to the States and ended in Vermont? How did you end in Vermont? <laughs> Well, I've never heard about Vermont before. <laughs> it wasn't Vermont. It's not like, you know, Michigan or California states you hear yeah, about. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> There's nothing from like, you know, Mark Twain book or anything like that. Right. So, yeah. I, it was a kind of a random bounce by refugee program. And I see. Okay. Like we came to stay in New York. They just couldn't accept us. So right. The way all those things work, somehow, like it lined that I was. I ended up there with 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 my mother and father, you know. But it was actually kind of there's a lot of logic behind how things went. It's like you 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 land in Vermont as a refugee, <laughs> you know, and you never and, and, and you and, and, and this is and, and this you ended up in in the Burlington area, correct? In Burlington, Vermont, yeah. I know it and well. Like, yeah, we'll connect on that yeah. down the road even more, yeah. you know. But like, just landing there in that particular area where refugee housing is was literally across the street, across the gate. You know, it was a, it was, a, it was a kind of you know poor neighborhood, and there was uh, a reggae DJ living there, and uh, he had a guy his roommate who was really into hardcore and that you know they befriend befriended me within 20 seconds like That's awesome i had no uh corridor of like you know looking for it it's just like i came from hardcore punk scene in kiev landed here <laughs> and went straight into it that's awesome know? that's awesome like there, and uh you know i I, just, I walked out on the porch you know, there was there was actually a couple Rasta guys, you know, uh, standing, you know, that I only saw on the covers of the records beforehand. You know, there was quite a few of them living in that area, too. And these guys were just hanging out with them. And they were just like, you know, they looked at my leather jacket, which was kind of odd and kind of kind of brown, you know, and like <laughs> not, not, not the East Coast look, you know. Right. <laughs> and they were just kind of like, um you like like punk music and i was just like my english was zero but yeah how was you how was your english when you came here well it was like limited to my 
translations of band names. Like I oh. knew what sex and pistols means. Right. Right. <laughs> sex. I knew what the clash <laughs> means. Sex. Pistols. It clash. <laughs> right. You know, like yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, sure. That, you know, so I knew I knew the basics, but of uh, English. But as far as punk rock music was. I was pretty much an expert on it before I even left Ukraine. You know, there was, there was nothing that like, it was a very damn, I mean, as you know, punk rock is a very dance culture. It's like, once you're in it, you're pretty much, you know, on a connoisseur, you know? Now, now you, you, did you grow up in a musical household? Yes. Yeah. My father was a, a musician from, uh, you know, from his teenage years and, that's how he got his, uh, how he started getting in troubles with the, uh, guess fucking who, you know, Moscow, the fucking the bitch, you know, and, um, you know, it was Soviet Union times and it was a hardcore heavy Russification time. And, um, and that process was just kind of like getting on our, all our nerves, you know, so some people try to roll with it and have careers and lives kind of within the Soviet Union setting, but yeah. people who were more attuned to like their inner core and their soul, you know, they were just like, kind of like, fuck this, you know, like what, why is, why are we living in, in occupation, you know? Mm. And, and that's another insight for people, you know, right now who might be watching her like, Oh, occupation now it's like no the occupation of ukraine has begun like hundreds of years ago by right there's all it's always been tumultuous thing going back and forth uh ukrainian people were trying to fight off moscow for so many centuries that it's it's absurd that the world doesn't know it well enough i mean we don't expect everybody to know our, our history it's our fight yes but in, in the same time, right now, Ukraine is kind of fighting for the rest of the world, you know, because it's not like there there was a time when like kind of democratic and democratic, uh, you know, values were just kind of taken for granted for, for a little while. And people are like, oh, yeah, that's how it goes. It's like, no, it's not really how it goes unless you constantly get out there in the fucking trenches and fight and fight for it. That's how it goes. So. Ukraine is once again in, in, a, in a warfare on behalf of democracy and, you know. Ukraine is, uh, in Kiev, is, is through history, has always been in the crosshairs of, of a lot of, 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 you know, of a lot of this stuff. And uh, just, you know, you know, Russia, Russia's, you know, Russia and Russia and the Ukraine is, is been, going back this is going back a, a, a long a long time and and for and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of play this a little bit as sort of like the dumb even though even though I I know a little a little bit about this stuff I'm gonna play mm -hmm. it a little I'm gonna well, play didn't a you little say your, didn't you say your family was uh yeah from Poland and my, I and have my I I have um part of half of my family's from the Ukraine half my family's from Poland but it's also it what's confusing also uh, it, for, for my family history is the parts that they came from is like, is it the Ukraine? Is it Poland? Is it Russia? It's part, it's, it's a part of that. It's a part of that uh, geographically that is sort of gone back and forth, you know, uh, through, through, wow. through time. So, am, uh, so what does that make me Ukrainian, Polish, Russia? You know, I mean, it is what it is, but I, my, my family comes from that, that area that's, that's sort of, gone back and forth, uh, you know, going back quite a bit, but I mean, it's horrifying. Uh, well, if, this... you're, if you're from, from that area, you were, uh, it's <laughs> the, the, the Polish, Slovakian, Czech yeah. and, right. and Croatian and Ukrainian and, and Belarusian, they're very close in the spirit to each other. Yeah, tribes. absolutely. So, Moscow, and, and, on the other hand, is a very distinctly different tribe. That tribe, I wouldn't call it tri tribe. It's basically, it's basically a corporation. You know, yeah. Moscow is basically a fucking IRS. You know, they're about yeah. as cool as fucking IRS, and they're admired as about as much as fucking IRS. You know, by everyone yeah. around them. 
So, you know, it's just continuous appropriation, cultural ripoff, resources ripoff. And now that things are turning not their way, yeah. Uh, everyone from starting from Estonia and counterclockwise, you know, all Baltic republics, Poland, yeah, Slovakia, Ukraine, Georgia, all the way, all, all the Azerbaijan, everybody, all the way to Japan is going to come with a bill and say, all right, here's what you owe us for all these hundreds of years. This is, this is coming up tonight. It's not even tomorrow. So everybody is psyched for that. Well, I mean, to a certain extent, it seems to me, uh, just from, and I'm not saying I, I'm not, I'm not a great, uh, I, I don't, I don't have all the information or understand it all, but it seems that, you know, this whole NATO thing and all these countries wanting to join NATO, um, just antagonize them or what they're using as an excuse, antagonize them, uh, into action he just doesn't want to see he doesn't want to see ukraine be independent is what it is you know ah this this is <laughs> wait, 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 wait. important correction okay please let's let's uh let's get this whole political theater antiques a little bit under microscope here and realize mm -hmm. that it's not about political theater as much mm -hmm. as people of course, everybody's so suspicious these days because they've been dicked around by fucking every source of propaganda on, on the face of the planet. I get that. But the important thing to understand that the fight of Ukrainian people against Moscow is being going on for way longer than NATO or yeah. United States existed. Consequently, it's a fight of people and not any kind of political theater. This is what I'm trying to illuminate illuminate here it's just like all these you feel me like yeah I mean, yeah yeah well it's like like tim said uh nah go read alexander dugan this has been coming for ages it has nothing to do with nato oh please it, it, it's it's so banal it's so fucking dumb to even like get into these like supposedly elevated political visions that people have like i'm just like please like <laughs> You know, just like if you want to really dispel propaganda, you know, what's a good source? History. You know, let's not mm. get caught. How, how, you know, no, no amount of propaganda can undo a thousand years of history. You know what I mean? And the history is a pretty solid, reliable thing. Like if that confrontation has been there for so long, it's probably has roots that far back. Makes sense. You know. Yeah, well, well, you, you know, um, here, I mean, I guess media in media in general, man, you know, just the media that comes across the board here is depends on what you're reading, you know, depends on what 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 slant you want on it, you know. Yeah, but fuck that. Be your own fucking disinformation yeah. agent. You know what I mean? Like people are like, oh, my God, we're fed. The It's just like, you know, it's just like making up. It's like making up excuses for the Russians who have been gulping down garbage from their information, uh, you know, disinformation channels. But it's just like, it's not about that. It's about how willingly you do that. You know, it's not about, I don't buy that whole like, oh my God, they were all brainwashed. It's like, what are you like so fucking passive and absolutely uh, have no free will on any level that you are just can be brainwashed any second of the day. I don't, I don't, I don't follow that logic. That's like maybe, um, it's like, how willingly are you buying into it? You know, mm. I mean, it's literally like taking acid. You know what I mean? Like, you know, okay, you some of them, some of those uh, Russian people who are brainwashed and supposedly don't know of the deeds of their system. You know, it's just like, yeah, how many hits of that Kremlin acid they've taken? One or fucking 25, yeah. you know, and how willingly? Some of them taken 50 and they want more, you know, and the one who took one, two, they're just still kind of like, 
oh fuck like this is a bad trip like how do i get the fuck back and like don't do this shit ever again but that is a grain in the sand you feel me like it's kind yeah. of boils down to that why you know, do so many of them go for that because it, it it's it's a really primitive scheme you know a lot of them go so willingly for it because it bigs up their primitive ego you know it's just like they've been told that they're some part of some fantastical great uh empire and they're psyched about it because it's like i mean Ruger, like Ruger kipling is a fucking great writer right like jungle book whatever so on so forth he was a great writer great poet but you go in fucking uk and try to bring up his name people will be like dude shut the fuck up this guy was glorifying colonialism and so fuck him right so they understand that's not a fucking thing to do like mm. you know uk france you know portugal they're all trying to wash off their imperial karma because there is a bit of slow but progress you know in consciousness people are like yo i can't just go in somebody's fucking house and take their shit like i'm gonna get fucked well, you know at some point if we keep doing this and these motherfuckers have like no they are not even near that page mm. they don't understand the shame of doing it they literally think it's a great fucking way to go that's where mm. they fucking at mentally you know you know right there. one of the things that, that that i found really bizarre was the whole the, the the Nazi thing and the whole you know that that whole that that, that Nazi um, dialogue? I want I want to read I want to read something that I jotted down. Mm -hmm. The claims of Nazis and genocide in Ukraine are completely unfounded, but part of a narrative repeated by Russia for years. Moscow even made wild allegations that Ukraine was building a plutonium-based dirty bomb. <laughs> Ukraine, Ukraine has never taken seriously Moscow's call for demilitar demilitarization and its insistence on denazification is, is merely Russian stone bullshit you're fucking reading right there or <laughs> is, is merely Russian propaganda. In the words of Ukraine's foreign minister, it's crazy. Sometimes not even they can explain what they're referring to. The, the the whole thing with the rush going on about the the Nazis in the Ukraine it's like what the fuck is that all about? Well, it's their technique of fucking political gaslighting. It's just yeah. doing what they're doing, but calling somebody else out on it. And yeah, that's, they're they kind of perfected that. <laughs> it works on their own territory perfectly. Right. So the reality is, Russian fascism is a real thing. It's not a just a hashtag you see around Russianism, Russian fascism. It's just not, it's not a hashtag. It's a fucking real thing with leaders. Mm -hmm. I don't want to toxify my fucking head while remembering their fucking last names, but there are, there are mm -hmm. uh, ideologues of it and followers, like casual followers, followers who are just on fire about it, followers who are just kind of like sublime followers. And they're all committed to that idea that world owes them something, like some kind of, that, you know, that they are the IRS of some kind of greatness and that everybody is, it's just on that, on their territory, it's so easy to get people on that train because they ain't got shit, <laughs> nothing fucking going on. So the only thing they can hold on to is some kind of preposterous idea of their past glory. And that's how it's you are any fucking it, it, it's how you get people on any pathological train by mm -hmm. like giving them like well since you ain't got shit maybe you can hold on to the fact that you were like fucking you know have white skin or whatever the fuck you know that's how it should start so they have that fucking train going like fucking 500 miles an hour it's bizarre considering <laughs> kiev and, and you know and, and the atrocities that the nazis committed baba yar and all that in, in in world war ii it's incredible that they would even pull that card but nothing but i guess not it's, guess a, soci no it's a sociopathic yeah. culture there's yeah, right. zero right. empathy i mean they right. killed I mean, stalin killed 20 million of yeah. his own people in gulag in gulags i mean they, they're 
and they were just simply <laughs> crossed out out of the building supervisors, you know, list. And that was at the end of their story. And nobody ever had the balls to say anything about it. Like, where did that guy go? Was, oh, he's the enemy of the people. So bye. You know? Hey, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's veer back into music and, and, and we'll come back to this uh, in a bit. Um, you, you, uh, you, um, who, who were your influences coming up? Who, like when you first picked up guitar and, 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 and wanted to do music, who, who, who were your mentors? Who, who really? Jimi Hendrix, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, my, my father listened to Jimi Hendrix. I think I listened to the Jimi Hendrix. Your father, your father played in one of Ukraine's first rock bands, Meridian, yeah, right? Yeah, Meridian, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so, I mean, just the hypnotic sounds of like what Jimmy was doing. It's just like, I mean, it cuts through anything. I mean, of course, I, we, my dad had it, had it all, you know, like, you know, Beatles and Rolling Stones and, you know, Animals and Pink Floyd and whatever it was, you know, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, like you know, everything was going on at that time. You know, we hit it in, our, in my house. Like there wasn't, it, it was, uh, but the thing that really cuts through everything for me is really Jimi Hendrix and especially the live Jimi Hendrix, you know, Band of Gypsies. We had That's, that. Hey, City, know. City, you out there? <laughs> you know what? Let's, 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 uh, hold on. Let's just do this right now. You know, because we didn't, you know, hold on. Hey, City, how you doing? Oh, you try to catch me napping again, Drew. I don't think so. You know what? Eugene, Eugene hit on it. So let's do al let's do album of the let's do album of the week. You ready? Oh, oh yeah. Here we go. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, album of the week. There you go. Boom. Oh. No. Yep. That's what? it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fucking amazing. Yo, come on. You didn't tell me. Okay. No, I and I and I gotta say, we we didn't tell Eugene what album of the week was. Usually we don't tell the guests. We like to spring it on him. But we just land we just landed we landed on this one. So Sid, go ahead. You have the floor. All righty. Hey Drew, why you while I'm yicky yakking, don't forget my ticker. I got you there. Go ahead, Sid. All righty, guys. So this is one that was quite different. You know, you expect Jimmy Hendrix, but hey, even I didn't know that I was gonna cover this until yesterday. So this is Band of Gypsies, which was uh, Jimi Hendrix's first live album, and actually the first without the original group that he was doing uh Jimi Hendrix experience. Uh, it was recorded on January 1st, 1970 at the Fillmore East in New York City with Billy Cox and Buddy Miles, who were basically, you know, session sessions uh, musicians and ended up playing with Jimmy. Um, and this was uh, released, I believe, on March 25th of 1970. Um, Capitol Records put it out. And Jimi Hendrix, even though he produced this, it was listed under Heaven Research. Don't ask me why. Um, you know, there's not much too much honestly say about the record itself. I mean, it is pretty powerful, but just from my personal, you know, my personal being on it, listening to, you know, a lot of Jimmy's earlier material, it was definitely different to see two different musicians play with them, even though the guys he had prior always were like that, that back, like that glue that held that band together. I mean, he's an amazing guitar player, amazing musician, and you know almost 50 years later roughly 50 years like this guy's still being talked about because that's how much of an influence he's had on many musicians people and life in general like a lot of the stuff he wrote it touches so many people absolutely sid uh eugene is this a record that resonated for you fuck yes i mean come on and it, it's gonna keep resonating like for i mean i have so many stories attached to that record that <laughs> that I'm glad that I'm on your show and it's a proper way to, to channel them in. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, actually Tommy Ramone worked on this record. Is that he right? Was, he, 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 he worked. Let me guess. He was, if, he was engineering said, on that record. Is that right? Cause Eddie Kramer was involved in this. Yeah. So somehow I was, you know, I mean, Tommy, you know, was born just across the street from me. He was born in Budapest and Hungary. And right. something that people kind of forget that like a lot of cats from fucking Eastern Europe were in a very fabric of creating punk rock. And uh, he was just like, just like 
basically like me was a refugee from fucking Moscow atrocities. I mean, Jimmy's uh, Tommy split when Moscow tanks rolled in into Budapest in 1957, 56, 57. Yeah. So they were refugees into Austria, just like we went mm -hmm. and end up here. And so anyway, he was fast forward a little bit. He was engineering on, on this record as wow. I love this. Yeah. I, I love this record, man. This record was big for me, uh, you know, growing up. This 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 record, <laughs> this record was huge. And and you know, I love this record. I love the Buddy Miles stuff on this record. You know, um, we got to live together and uh, changes. Well, now my mind keeps going through these changes. I, I I love this. Listen, this is one of those records. As a thirteen and fourteen year old kid, I listened to over and over and over again just I mean, hypnotic like the hypnotic feedbacks that are so extended and, and and the capture of that is yeah as a child if you exposed yeah. to you know various kind of musics and and, and that's just kind of saying like okay, like okay there was psychedelic rock going on at the time of my childhood i listened to some of it because of my father uh -huh. But it didn't have that kind of effect like this. Like this was psychedelic yeah. rock that had like shamanistic effect. Yeah. Then yeah. you know. Then of course you know if you you probably seen the the, the, the Rumble documentary on uh, Native American Americans in rock and roll. And so when Jimmy's part comes up, it's kind of like makes even more sense why it's so hypnotic. You know, just just how whole blues and and Jimmy's native. Um, American vibes are so thickly in it, you know. So that shamanic thing really was moving me because we have tradition of that in Ukraine of the shamanism, you know, Molfar. Uh, it's called, you know, sh shaman is called Molfar in uh, Ukrainian, and and it's a mis I mean, Ukraine is very mystical territory. The more western you go towards the Carpathian Mountains, towards the Slovakia and Poland, Romania. The more it gets kind of super vibey and in depth, you know, very, and that's why that area was always super anti Soviet and remains to be, you know. The, I just wanna, I just wanna say that um, after loving that record for many years, uh, they put a, a DVD out from the, this is from the Fillmore. Right. And, um, this of him playing the, uh you know this those songs and a lot more at the film where, and this and, and this was like a I, I read up on this being a filmmaker this was a very early version of like video a videotape that they they shot the show on and just seeing him play those songs was was just years later was just mind blowing and, and it was just absolutely mind blowing and yeah that was all that stuff was recorded at the at the Fillmore East man so well done, well done, Sid. Uh, any, um, nice pick, man. Yeah, for real. So, yeah. How to, how to, just a little bit of help, Eugene. Just, a, just a little bit. I, I, I told him. I, I thought. I said, you know what, band of gypsies, bro. Let's go with that. You know. But it was yeah. on very many levels. Actually, it reminded me that when I first moved to New York in '97, '98, I, I was uh, house sitting for uh, Ukrainian uh, theater director. I was doing some mm -hmm. theater stuff. She was gone on ethnographical expedition out in, you know, out in the world in Siberia. And uh, she was studying shamanism, actually. And so I was house sitting for her on 11th Street in Ukrainian village, you know, 11 and uh, second. Yeah, 11 second. And when she came back, she was just, she was telling me, her name is Verlana. <laughs> Verlana was <laughs> hey you kind of like for some reason didn't want to sleep in a bed you kind of like got that whole area going on over there like your mattress and your writings are over there and i was like yeah i don't know why maybe it's because of those drums on the top of here that from like the shaman drums and she's like yeah maybe it's because of that or maybe it's because bob marley used to sleep there oh i was like tell me more what's wow. happening so she, you know, she pulled up some photos with Bob from like 1969 and so, you know, before he was big, how he used to come up here and, you know, 
pick up some cash doing some not only musical work you know and uh so then i was of course i was like yo i'm kind of on the right track like you know in this right. Crib right here so <laughs> then i moved one block over where, get my own where, where giant where giants once walked right <laughs> so seriously i moved one block over like a year later two years later year and a half later to 11 and third right next to the webster hall yeah sure and um you know i was like coming back with my guitar like five in the morning always home and katie a super in that building she was a like, super sweet lady I think she still works in that movie theater right there across the street and she was like hey there was already one young man here living before you with guitar and you know he always had a lot of fun he was just going up and down the stairs with guitar really really late at night and i was like katie who's that tell me more and she's like that's right his name was jimmy and there was a bar across the street right here. And he used to sometimes just pick up his guitar and we would all get a little treat, you know? Wow. I was like, damn, on 11th Street, block to block, just like that. I was like, fuck, I'm, there, I'm there, really there, on the right track here. There are no accidents. <laughs> no, like, hey, Sid, you, Sid, you got your show coming up? That's right, guys. So if you didn't know, I'm going to be doing a new episode this coming Wednesday, April 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or New York Time. Uh, just go to mixlr.com backslash SDK sound system. Uh, I've been, you know, every show I do is archived. Uh, got some special announcements coming up this week. Also, information coming up on the park show, the after party that we're doing after the uh, the park show, and also some new, new stuff. Um, speaking of, you know, Eugene, being from, you know, Ukraine, I've been also doing my little rabbit digging hole thing okay. finding a lot of super obscure stuff from europe like a lot of anarcho punk stuff right. that you don't like drew but everybody else likes <laughs> That's drew, what, what's yeah. the and for those who are wondering people i purposely play the shittiest music that he does not like on my show because <laughs> I, I know i never see him on the show i, I give him a hard time eugene because he, he comes up with some stuff and i'm like what is this <laughs> like well a like deserter from poland Oh geez, wow! That's one I haven't played in over three months, actually. Wow! So this no, that was my first hardcore show I ever saw because wow. we had a we had a punk scene in Kiev, and it was actually pretty sizzling in its own way. We had like the whole like ethno punk down. I mean, like there was, you know, like hey, incorporating. You know, this, this, sorry to interrupt you, but this is uh, uh, Radislaw says Eugene. Please say a few words about your first encounter with hardcore punk music. From what I learned, it was actually a Polish Polish band. D D how, do you pronounce Whoa. it? D Deserter? Is that how you Deserter, pronounce it? Yeah. Deserter. Whose yeah. song you covered some of your gigs. There you go. Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Every time we go to Poland, we play that song. I love that fucking song because Ask the Policeman. He'll tell you all the truth. Yeah. So, right. Very anti-Soviet song. And Poland was... Well, I'm going to get chronological a little bit because it's 1988. So I was like two years old, you know, <laughs> well, I, know, I was 14 or 15, but uh, no, uh, I was uh, 16, 15, 15. <clears throat> but uh, I went to, to see Deserter and the crucial difference between them and other punk shows that I was kind of used to was that they just played mean ass super fast uh, punk that was not fun. It was just fucking angry as fuck. And, and that's how I first time registered idea of hardcore that, you know, for me, punk was just kind of fun. Like it was rambunctious, flamboyant. It was sex pistols and, you know, it was, Devo, it was Dead Kennedys, like it had a, it had psycho element to it, but it was also very fun. Like the ritual around it on the show was basically pogoing and you know and and almost doing some chubby checker, you know, like twist and shout. <laughs> kind of things. Basically, it's not so far off that you know it's it's fun. And uh, with Ukrainian punk bands, it was like that with Vava and uh, Brateha Duke, and it was more like that. But when Deserter came. I was like, these guys are just fucking pissed as fuck. And 
if you know Polish language a little bit, you know that you can't sound any more angrier than when Polish person is fucking angry. Right. Like it's just all consonants, you know, like the, there's, there's very little wows in their language. So right. it's like, fucking, it's just like, wish you, wish you, wish you, wish you. Yeah. And that effect. And especially they started with a song that called uh, Moi Cry, which means my land. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of, the singer came out on like a stray jacket. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just like, this song is called Moi Cry. And it's about, because it's your cry, your land, and you are being occupied. And consequently, their fucking show lasted like minutes, you know. Like, of course, the organizers ran out and shut it down. And we went backstage. I got, you know, I got the tape. I already heard a tape before, but I got, like, the, the one that Joey Shithead from DOA produced. Ah. I got that album, you know. And, uh, yeah, they were already on, on uh, they were already, like, on the radar here. I remember when I came to the States, I opened up Maximum Rock and Roll and, like, and, and, and I saw Deserter Review. And I was just like, oh, so... This shit fucking works. This punk rock corridor. Yeah. This punk rock humanitarian. There, there is a there is a network. Yeah. There, yeah, there is a network to all this. Yeah. Hey, was, Sid, Sid, thank you, bro. All right, thanks, thanks a lot, guys. Yes, yeah, oh, and, and much props to you. And uh, hopefully, Rocks Off will book you guys back in New York again because it's been a while since you you played here. Like, hopefully, you guys get to uh, Jake will book you guys again soon. We'll see you later, Sid. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, for sure. Right. Cheers, guys. We'll play in New York. Yeah. Thanks, man. All right, Sid. Well, 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 well done. Um, you know, I want to bring a friend of ours on, and um, that would be Vlad from Organic Grill. What's up, Vlad? Hey guys, how are you? Yo, how are you, buddy? I'm good, good. Eugene, big fan. For you, Thanks, for me, you're like Johnny Cash and uh, Joe Strummer of Ukraine. You always oh, say God. what you want. You always play what you want, and uh, I can. Cannot identify more with this anti-Soviet thing. I went through this myself, and I noticed. <laughs> and I, I ran as far as I could. <laughs> yeah, your anti-Soviet vibe is pretty <laughs> alive and well, and it's, it's kind of you know, it's 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 kind of pathetic to see people like wearing like hammer and sickle T-shirts or romanticizing this thing, like just sipping on that fucking Moscow Kool-Aid. And it's just like, I was born so fucking, <laughs> you know, like, yo, you know what that calls? That hammer and sickle, that's fucking Soviet swastika. That's what we call it. It's a fucking Soviet swastika. How fucking cool is that? You don't it's, fuck. It's also, it's also great that people like you who spend more than half of your life here is still so connected to, to the country you came from. The same with me. I spent more than half of my life here, but I still feel very connected to Ukraine. I'm from Odessa. Wow. Oh, man. Fuck. Oh, absolutely. Especially cultural pockets like this. Like Odessa is like, for people who don't know out there, you, I don't know how you describe Odessa to, to uh, you know, people, but it's kind of like the, you know, the New Orleans and Rio de Janeiro oh, and Napoli that's, of... That's Vichy a great Colorado. analogy. That's great, yeah. Of Ukraine, yeah. And yeah. you're doing amazing work of popularizing uh, tradition and music. I, I love every time Thank I... Thank you, man. Thanks. Uh, every chance I have to go to your concert, I always go. I, I literally back uh, Drew to put me on the show because <laughs> I wanted to be part of it. <laughs> Hey, hey, Vlad from Gina. Best of luck in your new location. You got you guys moved over to. You're on Third Street now, off Sixth Avenue, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're moving. We hopefully we have a bigger kitchen. We're gonna do more of our own stuff, and maybe Eugene, maybe we do one dinner where we can get um, help for Ukrainians and donate all the money. We do it, man. Yeah, let's do that. I'm in yeah, on that. Absolutely. Let, let, let's absolutely. do that. I, mean, I, I love your place, man. It's. We gotta make a, you know, we'll do another thing there for sure. For yeah, sure. but let's do let's do that. Uh, I'll follow up on that. Let's do sure. that. Vlad, I want to thank you so much, man. You, oh, you're, nice. you're, a, you're a great sponsor, and and I'm very fortunate to have you part of the show. So thank you, buddy. Eugene, great work, man. You too, man. You too. Organic grill, man, all the way. <laughs> cool. There you go. Um, yeah. 
Uh, Lori from uh, Women of the Pit says, um, we just featured Death Pill from Kiev. Any other hardcore bands from Ukraine you can recommend? Yeah. Actually, there's quite a nice thriving scene. Uh, my favorite is Field of Variation. Sp space of, uh, Field of Variations, yeah. They're from uh, Vinica. Yeah, it's a, it's a really kick-ass band with um, um, I mean, it's modern, you know, hybrid of tons of styles, but I'd consider them to be pretty on point hardcore band for sure. Considering cool. that the topics they're tapping into, yeah, space variations, yeah. Brandon Vince says Eugene here, and and, and I have I have a. Uh... I have a photo to go with this. Eugene, it warmed my friggin' heart to see your donation to Rogers GoFundMe. Awesome. And here, oh, here, here's here's a shot of you and our good friend Roger Moret. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, it was yeah, another another thing is the all inclusivity of hardcore scene, the way I know it, the way I experienced it, you know, from Vermont, from from the group of kids in Vermont who just kind of took me in and got me up to speed on all the East Coast hardcore affairs. You know, I was pretty much kind of, I mean, Vermont was not particularly mixed up with, you know, a lot of refugees and immigrants a little bit. So I was just kind of a lone wolf in that sense. Yeah, I tried to bring a couple other kids into that scene and some of them stayed and some of them didn't. But the all inclusivity of it was actually kind of phenomenal. Like I was just completely betaken and befriended by kids from hardcore scene and I ended up moving in with them and living with them and just within like second minutes, you know, and then and then meeting Roger like years later. It, this was this picture was on on a podcast somewhere here in New York ah. City, and uh, and I was like, "Wow, it's Roger!" And he came up and he said, "Hey, man, I'm also immigrant punk," and I was like, "What?" Like you know, because like I knew Agnostic Front as one hundred percent New York City kind of Americanas. We're talking about. And he was like, "Yeah, I'm Cuban." Yeah. And I was just like, so that all makes sense because as we talked before, like Tommy Ramone bringing in the vibes of, you know, Eastern Europe into punk rock and uh, Ivan Kral from, you know, Patti Smith's band and Iggy's guitar player from Czech Republic, you know, mm -hmm. Roger. It's like major people in creation in the very, very <laughs> genesis of punk music. Who are all from there you know no no fucking wonder of course it's like this is music of people from who come from experience you know here's an interesting one christopher valdez is ask him about the bootleg records made from old x-rays oh yeah is that, My, is that right yeah of course is is, is 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 that a format i'm not familiar with <laughs> yeah i think that i think the kind of the hipsters kind of got not, not to insult the you know, Christopher, <laughs> but but the hipsters kind of get hold of this topic of you know the music on we called it music 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 on the castiach music on the bones. It was literally like before vinyl. I mean, Soviet Union had only one label. It was state licensed fucking crap uh, company. You know that only yeah. issued like garbage basically. Right. And so to get anything, you had to. To, to replicate anything, you, you you if you had a friend who works like in a theater and they had, ah. a, you know, the thing to to create technology, like in the 60s and 70s, create a, what is it? I forgot, a phonograph or whatever mm -hmm. it's called, the thing, the duplicator of that thing. So you basically could bring like any vinyl which X-ray plates work just fucking great for. I see. And they, I don't know what the exact technology is, but they would basically <laughs> curve. That's awesome. The that is awesome. Trail on <laughs> it, and then it would rub off very fast. Like after, like you know, five, six listens, it sounded. Oh, like, I see. It was temporary. Yeah, like it's forty years old. Yeah, yeah. But right. 
but yeah, my father has a couple of those, you know, that's wow. just like, so now it's like, a, you know, like, uh, there have been a couple articles and, you know, like pitchfork and things like that's, that. Bro, that's great. That. Yeah. Hey, let me, uh, let me take a quick uh, break, a quick sponsor shout out. And, uh, you know, uh, if you need to, if you need to get up and do anything and we'll come back in like five minutes and we'll, and we'll continue uh, to the top of the hour. Okay. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. We are honored today to have our guest, Eugene Holtz from Go Go Bordello, special show. And I want to thank you all around the world for watching and listening. Uh, any questions, uh, feel free, feel, please feel free uh, to post them up. If you have a burning desire and you want to contribute to the show, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a super chat option there. And if you're wondering how to, how to really get down and support the show, there is a Patreon page. Uh, it's our community within a community. We've talked about it many times. Um, please support this show. This show survives on your support, and that's the truth about it. And also on our great sponsors. We had Vlad on before. Another one is 126 Hardcore Clothing. It's a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They're about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Get in touch with them, www.126clothing.com. Come on now, Generation Records. Since 1992, they've been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs as well as T-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com. Follow them on Facebook <clears throat> and on Instagram. Excuse me. Last but not least, the Texas Silver Rush is a jewelry design firm and boutique store located at the birthplace of the Texas country music scene, Fredericksburg, Texas. I got to ask Eugene about, about Texas, man. Do, they, do those guys go down there and play in Texas? We got to ask them that, how they go over in places like Texas. They specialize in work with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces as well, style them for, for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Rolay, Ring of Star, and of course, Agnostic Front. Information online, sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. I uh, want to mention, also want to mention Nancy Burrill's book event, uh, co hosted by Women of the Pit. This is coming up on Saturday, May 14th. I am moderating this event. This is at our beloved Generation Records. Uh, this is a cool thing that's happening. Uh, this is the same um, day as the Black and Blue Bowl, but this is happening early. This is this is starting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It should be over by 3. There's an acoustic set by Kate 108. This is going to be a great event. Come through. Uh, we would love to see you. And uh, that's what's up. Don't be shy. Come on through. Um, Want to mention also, of course, we got the big show in Tompkins Square Park coming up this Saturday. Featuring the Capturers, Cro-Mags, JM, Burn, Wisdom in Chains, Murphy's Law, and Madball. This is going down. Black and Blue Productions presents in our beloved Tompkins Square Park. There is a GoFundMe to cover expenses for this event. Please look it up. It's going down. Um, go to GoFundMe, you know, just punch in black and blue, mad ball, Murphy's law, and it'll come up expenses needed, uh, to cover the big stage that's coming in and everything else. So this is happening this Saturday. It is going to be a banger. This is the first time that we, they, us black and blue, you are back in the park since the, uh, the last big event a year ago. So that is, that is very exciting. Also, I want to mention um, that my new film is screening in Brooklyn on May 23rd. My new film, The Jews and the Blues, there are still a couple of tickets left. 
Um, this is going to be a great event. A lot of people you know will be there. Um, it is going to be uh, – uh, there's going to be a Q&A that um, Howie Abrams is moderating with uh, myself, my brother Evan B. Stone, who's been on the show. And, of course, you may know him from Expedition Unknown on the History Channel and Ethiopian-Israeli musician Gilly Yallo. So don't be shy. Uh, you know, come on down. And uh, it's in Brooklyn. It's in Prospect uh, – right on – it's uh, Prospect Park, right? Right – right – um. Right on the park. I believe that is Prospect Park. So come to the screening. There are a couple of tickets left. Um, what else? I think. Oh, you also, the next, the next Back to the New York Hardcore Root Show is Sunday, of course, Free All Ages, May 22nd. And that is Ludacrist. Butterbrain, Fuck It, I Quit, Extinguish the Code, and Deja. That is happening. Um, all are welcome, of course. Uh, Ludacrist wanted to play, and they are playing. So come on, get up, get down. This is going to be great. Um, yeah. Is that right, Lori Dawn? You got your frock picked out? <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking forward to the screening in Brooklyn. Uh, it's going to be great. You know, um, these films take... A couple years to do and uh looking forward i got uh the brooklyn screening i'm going to dc i'm going to israel and germany there's a lot going on with my uh with, with my new film uh last i want to mention that um on uh sunday june 26th uh at the bowery electric uh of course our back to the new york Hall car root series sworn enemy with the inhuman reunion it is our first show with the rebranded um, Antidote NYHC. We are known as Incendiary Device now, Blackout Shoppers, Sewage, and DJ Sid the Kid. So you got to come through. You got to come through for that. I think I covered everything. Oh, God, as if you haven't heard enough. Hey, if you're in Berlin, I'm doing a book signing on my way to screen my film in Germany. That is June 3rd at uh, Cortex Records in Berlin. I am doing a, uh, a book signing for the New York Hardcore Chronicles, Volume 1, 1980 to 1989, a flyer oral history. Come through. I'd love to see you in Berlin. In Berlin. So that said, everybody else okay? Um, I think we covered a lot. Happy Easter. Happy Passover. We need a, na we need a name for the upcoming fest. The Cortex book signings, June 3rd. The Bowery Electric shows on May 22nd and 26th. The Black and Blue show in the park is coming up this Saturday. The Nancy Burrell book event is May 14th. My walking tour for patrons. By the way, if you are a patron, if you are a patron that supports the show, we are heading out on the walking tour on Saturday, June 7th. Take it. it is free for all patrons who support this show. So let's bring our guests back on. And that said, hey, Eugene. Let's bring Eugene back on. Hey, man. Yo. Oh, yeah. Okay. You still smoking, man? Sometimes. Yeah? Sometimes it does. It does uh, refocus the mind for sure. I'm trying have to ever, finish some you, work, ever, you know? It's not like... Yeah, what's going on behind you? I'm up in the silence retreat here, you know? I'm fucking... What's going, on, down, what's going on behind you? Is, is that work in progress? What is that stuff behind you? Um, yeah, um, just lyrics in progress for and that been coming up. And there's also a couple songs from uh, um, the Dicks, um, and and Warzone that I'm working on an acoustic record of uh, and uh, and Void. Wow, yeah, I'm working on an acoustic record of, of hardcore songs that I just loved always and. And I just kind of cycle back into the the Woody Guthrie-ness of it all, you know. Oh, I mean, yeah, man. I just found I, go, I, I, I come back. I come back to Woody Guthrie a lot, man. There's so it, it's such a it, it's an incredible. Um, how do I even say it? I, I, I as an artist and, and as a lover of Americana and 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 um, I come back to Woody Guthrie again and again and again, man. Well, the narrative 
and it's yeah. condensed narrative. I mean, I just recorded the "You Fascist, You Bound to Lose," you know, <laughs> and that that is just such a hardcore song. It's yeah. it's us. It's it's like sick of it all to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's 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 like it's it's victim in pain. It's it's very uh, to the point. There's no there's not a not a one single wasted uh, space a second. It's just pure delivery, and um, kind of I found myself listening to to hardcore music more and more actually in the last five six years than I even more back than back then. Mm. You this know, is Woody Gut. By the way, this is Woody Guthrie at McSorley's down right, down. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. That that's and I have another one. Wait, I gotta find. I have another great. I have a great Woody Guthrie shot of him on the subway playing on the subway. I bet you fascist, you'll be surprised that people in the world are getting organized. You fascist, you bound to lose. It. Except updated version. You rushes, you bound to lose. Oh, people of every color, armies are marching side by side, organizing. See you going down. You rushes, you bound to lose. Hey, all you rushes bound to lose. 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 You rushes. You bound to lose. Awesome. You know. Hey, hey, you, hey, you know, you know. At the break, I thought you guys, you guys play Texas. Sometime, yeah, 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 of course. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah we have. I mean, of course. I mean, it's on the way from Arizona to to Louisiana. So, you know, I I, I was in taking my notes and doing my homework. You know, I I, I jotted down uh, gypsy music, uh, and and I saw the doc, the documentary that you were in. I said gypsy mm -hmm. music reminds me of bluegrass and klezmer. I mean, of course, klezmer. That that's that's obvious, right? I mean. Growing up in, a, in, a, in, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, my, my grandparents spoke Yiddish. And uh, so, uh, you know, that, that was sort of in the periphery uh, was Klezmer. But is that safe to say? Is it bluegrass, uh, that bluegrass, gypsy music? I mean, every sort of country has that sort of hold that hold yeah. down vibe. Yeah. I mean, it's more than safe to say. And especially between gypsy music and Klezmer music, there is a deeper connection because. Klezmer music survived because of gypsy musicians in Eastern Europe. I mean, That's they, right. you know, both Romanis and, and Jewish people were subject to the final solution, uh, fucking Nazi plan, you know. I mean, you're talking about Babi Yar. Yeah. You know, you brought up Babi Yar before, so you heard about that. Oh, I mean, I grew I, I the stadium I used to train on in Kiev is in Babi Yar when I was a you know a runner back in, in you know in teenage years. And um, the connection I do know that Babi Yar actually started as a execution place for Romanis first. It was oh. actually, yeah. Then so there is a lot then the Jewish people were executed there. And so now there are monuments of to uh, there are several mo monuments in Ukraine where it's a, you know, a Romani and a Jewish person together as a victims of Holocaust. It's like a, so a lot of, um, a lot of the Klezmer music was preserved by Romani musicians that somehow just more, more of them survived actually. It's interesting because there's, um, you know, in research and in, in doing my new film and everything, you know, I went to I went to Israel and did a lot of research. And there's like a, a movement of young people now playing klezmer, which is which is awesome. You know, it's yeah. really great to see, uh, you know, a, a, a music that a, a genre that you would sort of think would be might be dying off that there's young people that are embracing. And I, I found that really refreshing. Well, it's, it's awesome. very uh, it's very close to. In, in its uh, its 
it's kind of very jazzy too. There's a lot of room yeah. for improvisation. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. Um, who, who am I thinking of? Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Um, American Frank um, London. Frank what's London. That? Frank London. Well, Frank London, I know, I know. Yeah, Frank London, Frank London lives down where downtown. Yeah, yeah. That's that was good. That was a, that was a good call. Yeah, we I, had I, a couple I, of I, I, with Benny, I was thinking yeah. Benny Goodman, but I do know right, Frank right, right. London. Yeah. I do know Frank. Frank London's in the Klezmatics. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, him yeah. and Matt Dario. In fact, our accordion player uh, Yuri, he he was pretty tight with those guys, and uh, yeah. he did a lot of projects with them. Um, yeah. I'm I mean, Klesmer was a part of a kind of like our, our, uh, our, 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 you know, our ally always musically, you know. I'm looking for, somebody was asking me about the origin of the name. I'm just trying to find that. Oh, um, well, that's easy. Yeah, go ahead. So we I'll just get it. right into it? Yeah. I'm glad they asked us, you know. Now is a good time to ask him. I'm the right guy to ask. <laughs> the whole thing about it is that, you see, Gogol is very... Here it is. I, I found it. What okay. is the meaning behind the band name? I know the writer Gogol was from the Ukraine. Oh, okay. So the person is already ahead of the curve. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Thomas Starkey. Okay. Yes. He was from Ukraine. I mean, he was... 1000% from Ukraine. He was actually just like Kafka had to jump through imperial hoops and to be published in German, you know, even though he's Czech writer, you know, I mean, you don't go to Munich or Berlin and walk out on the fucking airport and see, hey, welcome to the city of Kafka. You fucking see that in Prague. Well, it's mm -hmm. the same fucking with Gogol. It's not on the fucking St. Petersburg, you know, or Moscow. And even though he had to write basically in, in Russian to jump through those fucking hoops because Ukrainian language was forbidden, literally illegal, you know? Can you, just like language side was massive. Like they were trying to fucking orchestrate it for years because for centuries. So of course I took a name of uh, Gogol into, because that was my whole, uh, I knew that I knew that this fight is gonna break out on a fucking some level that nobody ever fucking seen before, and I wanted to tell that story and rub it into everybody's fucking face because Gogol is exactly like for you know literary people, it's like a isn't he Russian? It's like no fuck you, absolutely fucking not, and he'd be the first guy who fucking told you that, just like. None of the things that are you probably grew to love are supposedly Russian. Like 90% of them are not Russian at all. Because as I said before, Russia is a, a bitch-ass motherfucking IRS that takes shit from other people. You know, any, I mean, all, take any, like, what do you, like, come on, come on, Drew. Like, what, Drew, what's your, like, what's your thing that you consider to be like Russian and you like grew to like be like okay it's cool it's Russian so like fucking beat you know what is it come on fire away what is it vodka I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, 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 I'm think I'm thinking because uh what, what? it would what? be it would be something it would you would think it would be something music it would, okay, so let's go like Russian sailor dance, fucking dun, bum bum, ba da bum, ba da pop, like that whole thing. Like that's yeah. not Russian at all. It's written by Ukrainian Jewish composer Glier, based on a fucking Ukrainian and British folk melody. Because Ukrainian sailors in the Black Sea I hang see. out a lot with the British sailors. It's actually a British dance, essentially. Mm -hmm. Branded as Russian sailor dance, classic, mm -hmm. you know, dun, 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 dun. like that is zero fucking Russian. What else musically? Every, every, okay. Everybody's saying, Matt, Matt, what do you call it? Oh my Matt. God. Okay. Matryoshka dolls. Here we go. Great. Great fucking point. <laughs> Matryoshka dolls are fucking Japanese. You know, that is <laughs> Japanese fucking folk art 
that came, you know, through the far fucking eastern Russia, and then they resold it back to Europe as their own shit. It's re it's re it's regurgit it's regurgitated. It's fucking unbelievable. Like exactly, exactly. An uh, empirical reclassification. Uh, just the the list will go on so fucking amazingly far, especially like standards like the dark eyes. You know the the supposed super Russian song Ochi Chorne, mm -hmm. written by Ukrainian poet Hrebinka, Yevhen Hrebinka, Eugene Hrebinka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to the music of get this German German wall, walls. Mm -hmm. That was popular in the 19th century. Zero fucking Russian. Branded worldwide as the biggest Russian folk song. This shit is so fucking out of control. We'll get into that after the victory, you know. This shit will be taken apart to the point where they will fucking remain with their fucking sack of potatoes. Uh, that, that's all they're going to fucking have left there. <laughs> Tim Tim says Russia didn't even invent communism. <laughs> well, right. no, no, they didn't, and, uh, and but but I could see how they could. There you go. Um, I, I want I want to uh, something interesting about the band. I, I jotted this down, and and, and I'm quoting you here uh, uh, regarding uh, regarding the band. No matter how much our fan base developed and how much of a cultural phenomena we were becoming, there was always resistance from labels, especially especially indie labels. That was very ironic. The, the place where I actually experienced racism was not from the rednecks and not from the skinheads I, I lived with who were not Nazi skinheads. The actual snob racism I experienced was from the indie rock scene and the people who control people in control of the late 90s indie. They were not down with us, even though we could outsell all their bands put together. What we, what we got came from hardcore touring and people realizing we were a song-based band. Fucking 1,000% truth. Yeah. Now, interesting. Interesting if fucking, all, you know, all these indie, you know, Record yeah. labels, record labels are record labels, man. Right? I mean, yeah, but there is something about it a little bit more than that. It's like, I mean, whatever the fuck, I don't give a fuck about it. I never give a fuck about it anymore at all because you know, I I knew how it's done. I, I wasn't looking for anybody to serve me on a fucking platter, you know, like, yeah. um we did it ourselves back in ukraine in a way that was more fucking labor and work than here actually i'm i kind of relaxed here <laughs> you know even though as as laborious as it as it was the touring here but back in ukraine i mean if you want to have a show a lot of times you have to fucking build the stage you know like you know you have to fucking get nails hammer fucking wood and build the fucking show and build the stage because the state wouldn't the state would say hey uh well to have a show you need to have a stage and it's like no we don't give a fuck about stage we can't we don't need it and then i'm like no if you want to have a concert you have to have a stage all this bureaucratic insanity you know so okay like roll up the sleeves and start building so in a way like you know it was still very very uh doable for us here even though according to like standards here it is very hard but for me it wasn't hard to get into a fucking van for like fucking you know for like month and month it was just like okay we can do this and i, I tell you what it's it's actually now everybody's observing it because and the whole world is observing that 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 kind of gene, you know, of Ukrainian people, perseverance and resilience. But it's just like is 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 the same fucking gene they're observing now. Those are the same genes that helped us to fucking tour and you know with and and actually still get to the level we want to be on without any real support. Hmm. You know what I mean? 
Like it, I do, I, 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 I absolutely know what you mean because as an independent, <laughs> as an independent filmmaker, as we're on this totally independent show, really, it's just all I've done my whole life, man. Yeah, and, that, and it all comes, and it all comes from that hardcore ethos, man, of the DIY, DIY. And I, I said this in the Boston hardcore film that I was in. You know, the the one thing that 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 the biggest thing that I took as a teenager you know, from being a part of that early Boston hardcore scene was get up, get out and make shit happen. Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen quite a few slop shot shows and yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, Sam Black Church and Tree. Actually, Tree was, uh, we played with the Tree several times. With the, you, were, you were a lover of early DC hardcore, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I love, I, um, I just kind of hit it off very um very deeply with several people who were respectively some of them were really into dc hardcore and some of them were really into new york hardcore so mm -hmm. i just downloaded the whole thing like i would just yeah. walk around with records like this you know whole burlington break you know recording them and and people really befriended me and uh and i befriended them and it was really great era i mean 242 main the punk rock hardcore kid, essentially teen center that Gene Sanders and Bernie Sanders set up in 1987 or eight before I got there. But that was like, that was just a say, two, fucking two, place, man. Two, for those that may not know, 242 Maine, and this is something that I know about because I lived uh, right outside Burlington, Vermont in Winooski for, for a bunch of years. And uh, which is which is just it's wild, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> I was there for I was there for years, and so I know I know that that whole area. But two forty two Maine was sort of like, in lack of a, a better term, dumbing it down. It was like the CBGBs of Burlington, Maine. You know, it was it like was, no, no, it yeah, was, totally. Yeah, right? yeah. It was a Sunday matinee fucking place. Yep. And Fridays, Saturday, and Sunday matinee. I mean, and and I have to yeah. tell, I have to tell the story it's like please it's you know vermont is not like a central name once you talk about hardcore but it is because the kids who were running that place they were so fucking on top of this game yeah they were so savvy like they were and that radio station they had that radio station if i'm uh, yeah, yeah man that, yeah. that was <laughs> yeah totally of course so yeah. I mean, I base. I mean, I grew up, was born and raised in Ukraine, but I, I grew up again in 242 Maine. You know, seeing awesome. like, I mean, like shelter first shows, like all that kind of thing was just. Uh, it was ongoing. Like, how how old were you when you showed up in Vermont? Sixteen. Wow. Yeah, that's I just such graduated. A, I that's just a great. That's a great school. age. That's a great age, man. I just graduated from high school in Ukraine, and then I came here, and I. I had to go to high school again because I, you know, to learn English and sure. So whatever, I fucking went to the high school again and uh, for one year, and there I kind of met all the kids who, some of the kids mm -hmm. who brought me to two forty two Main and who were living in the same area as the refugee housing was in. And um, that's kind of that was like my crew for for years, you know, and they were just they just had such a like great knowledge and taste and hardcore like it was beyond like just having like, you know, the basics like like that. I tell you, that was probably one good criteria to tell how how on top of it, it was like rest in pieces was like our like Azure like band, like, you know what Is I mean? Oh yes, and actually, it's a probably one top three of my hardcore bands, and and um, it was like a it was on all the time. First album, the second album, you know, came out like it was like a, that was the revelation. You know, of course, we had like sick of it all and Agnostic Front and Gorilla Biscuits and followed into the whole shelter thing and trying to kind of see you know how it all fits together, connecting dots and. And into another was playing often there, 
in, in, in Burlington. Uh, you know, Mad Bull, of course, was amazing. I mean, like, I saw I saw Mad Bull at two four two when I was living there. Yep. It's just like I mean, Mad Bull always had like a super, rest, fun, yeah, a super funky pieces, vibe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but I mean, I still I have the seven inch from Mad Bull from the the, the 80, 88, 87, the very very first one. That's just. Uh-huh. Ball of, I mean, the, ball of destruction. Yes, yes, it's, <laughs> totally, totally. So, so actually, so I pulled this out. So I have a couple of tapes actually from back then. Oh yeah, great yeah, comp. You know? <laughs> Shit like this. So. Great comp. That was a great yeah, comp. So yeah. Then I found this tape. That was that. So that's my tape that I made for my friends in Ukraine, trying to get them into hardcore. Mm. They just kind of like went that, into that more like tech a, wall. And that's always that, that that's always a slippery slope, right? <laughs> I'm gonna no, get them, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get them into hardcore. Well, I mean, I had no problems getting them into like you know, like Dag Nasty, you know, yeah. like that was a little easy. melody. There's a little melody there, yeah. Yeah, like Fugazi, they just like like Fugazi changed everything. That was like the Is that great, right? Like, I saw Fugazi so many times Is and that actually right? Yes, absolutely. I, oh. I guess so Fugazi, as soon as I arrived to Burlington, I went to see their show in Metronome. And then they played in Toast and uh, Memorial Auditorium and, and other. I traveled to see Fugazi other places. So wow. it's, it's like it's literally probably my top favorite band. And um, and I'm I think all, that- I'm only now I'm only now starting to appreciate Fugazi. I, I oh, be- come on. Oh, man. Well, I, being that I was around for Minor Threat and I was a real big part of the Minor Threat thing, you know, and saw Minor Threat many, many times, by the time I, I sort of I didn't get on board with the Fagazi thing when it was happening. Now, of course, I certainly understand it, appreciate it, you know. Listen, but at the time, it at the time it was a little, yeah. Well, okay, I, I get this because because they they were going to Europe and and they were and they were listening to i'll tell you why because in in europe the 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 the, 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 like birthday party yeah and uh you know the fall and um gang of four these kind of yeah these bands were like moving walls you know here not not so much so right, right. when I heard the Fugazi, I was like, what the fuck? This is like hardcore with Gang of Four, yeah. with Sonic Youth, with fucking Fall. Yeah. And it's somehow it's with Dub. It's like all like it was amalgamation of all those mm-hmm. things. So that's how I was able to get my crew in, in Ukraine onto that train. Because I was just like, listen, let's start with Fugazi. They were like, that bring like Murphy's Law, which had like, you know, ska, reggae, dub, bad brands, like they like were all over it. But bringing things like Leeway and, you know, Rest in Pieces was like a little tougher kind of situation because it was just like so kind of metal, you know? And and I was like, yeah, it, it is metal, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very condensed metallic punk. You know, you got to get this. And um, some of them followed into it and some of them not, you know. Hey, Gina Marie says, uh, Eugene, thank you for sharing Pete Kohler from Sick of It All and Laurie's song, God Save Ukraine, on your page. I did the artwork for the song, and it was incredible to see it on your page. Oh, um, thank you, know, you. Yeah, those are, that's Gina from Women of the Pit, and, and, and that's, our, that's, our, that's our crew there. Those are our people. So, But, but also, Gina, thank you. And also, as always guess who were the first people to uh musically react to this i mean this song was out in like three days after war started like the mm-hmm. only band that got there faster was gogol bordello because i'm like fucking yeah. i have like my family in the trenches over there you know like i was on it and i knew it's coming but of course so chronologically speaking it, it is sick of it all who first posted the song about that and then you know uh, Jello Biafra reached out to me yeah. and he was like, yeah, of course, and of course, as always, and, and it's very significant because the same people who fucking meant it and were doers back in that day, they're the same people who are still doers now as 
as as as idea of doing something is pretty kind of vague to a lot of people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yep. so much respect to that. You know? Yeah. Did you did you um, leave uh, your 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 um, Ukraine initially because of Chernobyl? Um, well, we left Kiev because of Chernobyl. Okay. And we went and stayed with my family on the countryside, which is in East Ukraine, where the war is actually blazing fucking right now. Right. And uh, they um, relocated now. Some of them are in other parts of Ukraine. Or so. I we came back after that to Kiev, mm. and just because you're a refugee from Chernobyl, that would not give you in Soviet Union times exit rights. Like there's just no that is like people will be like, Soviet Union be like, who gives a fuck? You know, like that's not that wasn't that your health is not their fucking concern. Right. So it was actually amalgamation of many things. Chiefly it's a it's persecution of my father, you know, like that was ongoing for decades. I mean they just uh painted him as some uh well paint they all painted him he was totally anti-soviet <laughs> i mean fuck him you know i mean fuck him then and fuck him now and is, now they're gonna get fucked for real finally yes let's do it forces of victory in the house is your you know? grandma is your grandmother still with us who i saw in the documentary she passed away shortly. She was, she was, she, yeah. it was really, that was a nice touching moment. Yeah. It, she, it, 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 I really felt watching that documentary, like, you know, like I, it really put you across as a person. And, and uh, I really felt like I knew you after watching that doc. Well, um, women in Ukraine, especially like elder women in Ukraine have a special place. It's, um, it's, it's um, like, they have a lot of decision-making, uh, place you know and people really listen up to it it's re they're really attuned to it like there's no any kind of bickering around like yeah. an older wiser woman deciding like how things gonna go even even with chernobyl situation like i remember the whole like panic over it and how things are gonna go and um how are we gonna get out of it but you know my grandmother simply picked up the phone and called her sister who still lived you know a thousand miles away in east ukraine and made the plan and then simply told us how it's gonna go right <laughs> you know that we're gonna be leaving at 5 a.m and you know and then my dad and you know, the guys you know who were and the guys facilitated the decision so in a way it was kind of like in a native american tribe where you know like the assembly sure. of the elders, the elders. Yeah, the, the, yeah exactly and yeah, yeah. And on that topic, it's also really interesting and not from a nerdy point of view, but from a really practical point of view that Ukrainian people and, and First Nations people, especially in Canada, really have a great connection in, in Manitoba and um, in those areas where Ukrainians came to, to, to settle in uh, late 1900s. There's a lot of uh, Native American uh, Ukrainian intermarriage and uh, great understanding and those communities like really hit it off i mean you go up there and ask and they'll tell you they'll tell you that ukrainians are the the the, the most non-white people that they saw coming <laughs> you know hey let me say um i just want to put it out there anybody out there eugene we got eugene for a couple more minutes he's got he's got to go out and uh and uh, meet up with another friend of ours and do some music video stuff. Any questions you have for Eugene, please post it up. Let's take a couple questions from around the world uh, before we have to say before we have to say goodbye to Eugene. So anything you got, you'll put it out there. Don't be shy. You know, we we have no secrets here. What's your question, Drew? <laughs> you know, you want me to hit you with one? Paid, paid. Uh, you know, you know, we we we. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm just enjoying the process, man. Honestly, I, 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 just, I, 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 I enjoy, I enjoy the process. That's my joy in all this, you know, being a conduit, you know, um, you know, for, for, to connect people. 
on this show. That's that's my joy. Did you ever skate or write graffiti? That's a good one. Yes. Actually, I, I don't want to like fucking sound ridiculous, but I probably was one at least one of the first skaters in Ukraine. <laughs> That's awesome. I had a skateboard that doesn't bend, you know, that fucking thing. <laughs> that I, my dad got it somewhere in Estonia. We have family in Estonia too. And uh, is it is it like when you were growing up there? Was it well people were like really people were like, what are you doing? Like the <laughs> kids doing that. Like just was it why, really why are you rolling like, on a piece of plywood on the wheels? <laughs> like was was like writing graffiti back then could i mean i would assume in that sort of in that sort of environment writing well, graffiti, graffiti was really uh, dangerous graffiti was there because i grew up in abalone which is uh kind of the bronx of kia where as i said before it wasn't there was not nothing it was pretty unruly area i mean it was just one like formation of youth against another ah. Sounds familiar, right? So yeah, <laughs> it was like it was really outskirt of uh, of the city. There was literally nothing after for for hundreds of miles, and then it's Chernobyl, right? So you know, graffiti there was not uncommon, and it was actually quite uh, it was because it's construction area for the most part. Sure, it was mostly construction area, so that was not, and it was not very well supervised. Well, supervised, like. The dangers of our life back then included, like, when I was, you know, heckled very thin age, like, you know, 11, 12, 13. The, the danger of our life, the biggest danger of our life was dying on, on construction area. A lot of kids died just playing around construction areas because they were around railroad, around railroad tracks and shit like that. Oh, yeah. Jumping trains over the bridge and getting off on the other side, you know, just... <laughs> Get, getting on the train while it's taking a slow ride, slows down to get on the bridge. It was I grew, I, I, I grew up here in Manhattan, and the shit that we used to do as te as, as teenagers in the subway. I remember, I remember crazy shit like going coming in coming into the station, realizing we we're on the wrong uh, wrong uh, side. The train's pulling in, and we jump down, cross tracks, and climb up into the train. Like, yeah. wow, yeah. Teenage. Oh wow, Stephen. Wow, that's great. You talk about synchronicity. Stephen Oswald, who I grew up with in the Bronx, who played drums in the High and the Mighty with me. Right at that moment, the Bronx. Yep. Yeah, we 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 grew up way up in the Bronx. Man, we would. Wow. Oh, those those were crazy times. There was um, a Ukrainian community there in Bronx. Yeah. 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 There is. yeah. Um, looking at uh, Kai, uh, Kaiju. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Looking forward to seeing him in Boston in a few weeks. I've right. wanted to yeah. see Yogel for 20 years or so. And every time I've been close, something has happened. I'm ex I am excited. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, uh, Damien says, it's been a remarkable journey for you from DJ Hutz at Dibrovnovar <laughs> and East Village. How did you end up living in Brazil? And then what brought you back to the U.S.? Good question, man. That's yeah, a good, totally. good question. Yeah. yeah totally. Dibrova bar, of course. I mean, I, Dibrova. Dibrova. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've been to, I, you know, I, I think they mopped the floor with me in several of those bars. <laughs> in, 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 in Sly Fox, right next to Veselka. Right. And uh, the blue and gold. And that was like the oh, original God, thing. You know, that gold. was like... Ugh. So, well, it's it's old it's old school Ukrainian bars. I'd go up there with guitar and like you know play there for a while till they, uh, you know, want to hear something else. <laughs> but I did go to Brazil without any calculation. Actually, I just go went there for kind of an adventure and came back seven years later. You know. It does happen sometimes, but while I was there, I was so psyched that Ukrainian diaspora was alive and well and raging. And one of the most amazing things was that one of my favorite Brazilian bands, this kind of punk, hardcore, uh, baile funky band, Comunidade Jiu Jitsu, mm. who I DJed before ever going to Brazil, <laughs> 
once I got there and met and met the guys and met the the met Freddie Chernobyl, 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 Chernobyl. Mm-hmm. You know, his name, the, the the leader of the band name is Freddie Chernobyl. He was Ukrainian Brazilian. Wow. <laughs> So, you know, it was kind of like that. Joe Frank asks, what was the hardest aspect of America for you to get accustomed to? Um, infantility of Americans. I still can't get really, can't really get my head around it, actually. Um, infantility? Yeah. I, I don't, that's like the first word that comes to my mind. I think that, um, I, I, I don't mean it in a, you know. Me, meaning, meaning the, meaning the sort of, meaning the, the sort of mentality of, of, of most Americans is, is basically infantile. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, for hey, long. hey, listen, you know, media, like when they, when media, they, media, they, television, this fucking thing. <laughs> no, but it's not. No, but you have a lot of leeway here mm-hmm. for human potential. You're not living in a place where it's hard to get your shit going. Like if you want to get it going, you will get it going. Most of the places in the world are not like that at yeah. all. So the, the the most funny thing about Americans and and I like the place. I mean, there <laughs> I will always tell you i'll be the first one to tell you that when americans think that shit is like on fucking nine out of ten it's just like (laughs) all right it's like maybe like 1.5 or two in real reality of it you know like you want to know what shit is fucking on nine out of ten go to fucking ukraine you know but if you're like coming from that place to here the american (laughs) intensity and problems will always sound to you kind of like you think this is really real shit like okay (laughs) some of it some of it yes some of it but the general drama that goes along with it is just like please you know bill bill cashman um our friend who's a a squat historian uh and who still lives in a squat down on avenue c I All remember right. seeing Hutt's DJ Eastern European tunes, then hardcore songs. Meanwhile, yes. a brass band walked around impromptu jamming to songs yes. he played. When they jammed on Bad Raids, I was like, this is so sick. What the fuck was that about? It was exactly about that. That was yeah. the vibe. That was That's the that was cool. side of my mind, man. I was yeah. like, you got to get this. Like, the folk music of Balkan and folk music of Eastern Europe and bad brands is really a close siblings. Yeah, there you go. Get it? You know, it's like if you really like get into like that, especially you're talking about like Polish border and like Carpathian Ukrainian yeah, music. Yeah. It's like it's very close to discharge uh-huh. riffs. It's it's like real. Just just listen up to it. Right. It's, Acoustic. Yeah, it's, fucking, it's fast. It's yeah. minor key. It's just like, you know, like, like that'll be like, that's not uncommon for Ukrainian folk music. That's know? awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Lori Dawn, one of our, our great supporters. I adopted my daughter from, from Mar- 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 Maripol at 16 Mariupol. years old. She can relate to what he is saying about this. Yeah, well. Yeah. Naturally, of course. Uh, Wonderlust Queen yeah. says, sending love to you and your family. A few people a few people asked um about your family. How's your family, Eugene? My family is in a various form of enduring situation. Some of them are in hiding, uh looking for safer places. Some of them never left and read in a this most of them are in Kiev Mm -hmm. um the thing is that probably the most important to say is that nobody's voice is trembling when I talk to them on FaceTime because that's just not what Ukrainian people are like yeah I mean they 
I mean, we're going to win it 1,000 percent, you know, and the world is just tuning in into it. But they never thought it's going to be any otherwise. I mean, my uncle is, who's also Eugene Hoots, is, is, is 73 and he's all pissed off that they didn't give him the, 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 you know, the, the weapons to go and fight because he's too old. Mm. He's just like, he went and armed himself, armed himself with, uh, you know, uh, agricultural tools, essentially. At 73 years of age, you know, I mean, if, if Russia ever fucked up, they have really fucked up now, I tell you. And, and, and they did fuck up many times. Yeah. Tell us about uh, tell us about blue check Ukraine. Well, this is uh, a new platform for you know aid and relief for Ukraine. It was set up uh, with some friends of mine. This is a legitimate channel to donate to because a lot of people get suspicious, like where the money going to, and righteously so. You know, sure, uh, sure. there's a lot of uh, cyber. Uh, garbage out there that can sway or help but this is this is a legitimate one um it was uh, actually done with the uh, help of uh brother leo schreiber you know the mm -hmm. guy friend of mine who directed uh, everything is illuminated film mm -hmm. film about ray Facebook. ray donovan right um yes ray donovan as well yeah yeah yes yes leo yeah um so the book is such a important uh representation of ukraine you know book by jonathan suffering for that the film is film is based on so anyway cycling back to the theme leave is actually in ukraine right now wow i just spoke to him last night i just <laughs> <laughs> on the phone and this is a trustworthy channel to donate and please do so because we are kicking ass as a nation because most kicking ass part is done of course the defenders themselves and much respect first of all to people who are doing the most work who are on the front line doing it Another th important thing to respect and understand that Ukrainians, I don't know who came up with that metaphor first, but it's a very useful metaphor to understand. Ukrainians are kind of like a, a beehive that is doing its own thing and where it's collecting nectar, turning it into honey and doing their thing. Until you like, until some asshole just goes into it with their fucking fist. And then that whole operation turns against that fucking asshole so now ukrainians worldwide are representing and and that's and representing on a very high degree of enthusiasm which is why victory is very near <sighs> heavy 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 world it's very right heavy now. it's very heavy but yeah. you know <laughs> ukrainians are not the people who are going to get phased by some uh you know uh, maybe there are people who are somehow phased by uh, m mythology of Russian fucking greatness or whatever the fuck. Those are not Ukrainian people. Thomas says the Russians thought they would take Kiev in 48 hours. We're now on day 58 of the war. Well, that's just exactly that. You know, I mean, the, the whole thing is that Hollywood has to stop working for fucking Moscow, too, because, you know, all those movies, you know, Rocky, you know, with Ivan Drago fucking coming out, some fighter. It's like, dude, Ivan Drago, that's the motherfuckers you have in Ukraine. <laughs> I don't know why he's in that fucking movie, supposedly fucking being the, you know, represent rapping that. Like, that's the, that's the skewed idea. Those are exactly the kind of fucking people that you find in Ukraine, man. You know, those are the kind of characters who are there right now kicking ass tipping the whole mythology over how does this thing how does this thing play out how does this thing end eugene i mean i i, I mean how, how how does this thing end other than other i mean 
how, how can this thing end? Um, how does this play out? Well, it's going to play out as it was destined to play out. Russia will seize its existence as a state mm -hmm. uh, the way you know it. It will fall apart into three or four regional smaller states and will stop fucking with other people and will just yeah. fuck themselves. And 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 mind their own fucking business because they've been busy with business of other people for way too long. Just stay in there, mind your own fucking business, do your shit, celebrate your own fucking shit. Whatever is yours is yours. And whatever is right. not yours is not yours. Keep your and hands off it. Yes, exactly. It's simple. Just realize that going into somebody's house and taking their shit yeah. is a disgraceful thing to do. And there will be consequences sooner or later. Whew. Now yeah. these consequences are coming at the speed of fucking lightning bolt, you know? Laurie says Ukrainians will never stop fighting. They have been fighting for centuries. There is a reason their national anthem is Ukraine has not yet perished. Well, that's that's one hundred percent. I mean, the, yeah. fighting is not the real the issue. It's it's the it, it, they will be winning now. It's it's just it's the end of era. I mean, you don't as we discussed yeah. previously. The whole thing is not about it's a fight of future and past. You know, it's just like. <laughs> it's a they're operating an outdated modality yeah. where they go where they're they're still thinking that conquistadoring is the way to go. They literally think that that's awesome. It's like, it's it's certainly an it's certainly an archaic mindset at this point. Yeah, <laughs> but it exists, more, right? But it exists. It exists, feel, it exists whether more. it's Russia or 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 or, or parts of Korea. It's amazing in this world that it still exists. Yeah, it, it is amazing. It exists for a brief amount of time, and yeah. it's they're looking at serious crisis of the genre. Yeah. Hey, I know you got to get going. Um, I know I know you're going to go meet our friend Jesse Mallon. And, and yeah, from the heart of that, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Old school New York hardcore. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for coming on the show. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, it meant no, a lot to no. me personally, and I know it meant a lot to our audience. Anybody you want to shout out on the way out? Um, yes, I mean, sure, <laughs> all, 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 all my fa faves, you know, I mean, Roger, most importantly, I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to the show on the 23rd. I'm, I'll, you, I'm going to see you there. Yeah. You know, um, sure. everybody, I mean, Mind Force is fucking amazing. Wow. Yeah, pulling, pulling cards, man. Mind Force, huh? No, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Walter turned me on to Mind Force. Oh yeah, of course. there you Those go. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so you know, it's it's all coming back around to that. And hey, do you and, like Turnstile? Have you heard Turnstile? Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a little, you know, yeah, softer, but you know, but it's 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 got a right vitamins in there in the mix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that I love the fact that. This the music with substance is you know is is still gonna I hope gonna re, re, regain its value, just like fucking music with substance. I mean, hardcore is that you know, and, yeah. And let's let's fucking keep moving the train along, and hopefully more kids get in into it and listen up to the previous fucking accomplishments. You know, it's just yeah. fucking great music. It's fucking great music. You know. It's um, Sick of it all, Murphy's Law, Agnostic Front, Rest in Pieces, you know, Bad Brands, Embrace, Fugazi, Soul Side, really? you know, Gray Matter, Void. Fuck, man. That's all great. You all know. right, Gene. I'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you so much. For Take real, care. Man. Drew, thanks right. for having me, man. My, my, pleasure, my pleasure, you, buddy. See you the park, Take man. Bye-bye. Woo! Man, what an honor. And uh, I want to thank you all for uh, for taking that journey with me. That was uh, that was great. That was Eugene Hutz from Go Go Bordello. And uh, yeah, listen, you know, we could tackle those shows. You know, we could we could get outside our, uh, you know, 
Are we, we can get outside our we're purely an entertainment an entertainment show, you know? Um, thank you, David. Yeah, it was a great show. Um, thank you, Brian. Yes, Thomas, it was a great show. And everybody around the world, thank you, Robert in Scotland. Yeah, it was great, man. Lori Dawn, you and the gals, thank you so much, Women of the Pit. And oh, can he play our matinee? I'll ask him. He's a busy dude. He's got a big tour coming up, <laughs> you know? But he could certainly come into our hardcore matinee with his acoustic guitar and play, you know? Yes, Darren, it was a heavy show. It was a heavy show. Um, I did a lot of homework for it. I had pages, you know, it's interesting when I do the show. I have pages and pages and pages of notes, and then the show starts, and man, I, I just, I just try to engage with the person and just like, like my dad says, you know, uh, like dad says, uh, where is he? Wisdom, words of wisdom, you know, we'll, we'll take the, you know, ride the horse where it leads you. And that's what we, that's what we do on the show. You know what I didn't mention? I, I didn't get a chance to mention, you know, uh, on the show, uh, one time that Eugene and I did, um, share the stage a bit was when we did the, uh, the 40th anniversary of London calling uh, for Joe Strummer, uh, uh, music in memory. Um, you know, he performed, I performed. It was a Jesse Mallon thing at the Bowery Ballroom. And uh, that was a great event uh, for a great, uh, for a great cause. Um, hey, what are hey. you doing? Hey. I'm just enjoying the show. What a great show. Yeah, it was great. It was great. We can, we could, you know, it doesn't have to be purely entertainment. Bring on the dancing girls. No, no. This this was I've been looking forward to this and and I, nobody better to talk on this topic than him. Yeah, I was a little I was a little um out of my league and a little overwhelmed, uh, you know, with you know, um a bit, but you know, I did the best I could. I did my homework. Ah, no, you just, did great. It's a massive, it's a massive um um the subject is, is it's, it's, it's big. It's big. Yeah, oh, for sure it is. You know, you know, it, it, it's, it's big. And, and, and it is something that resonates with me, of course. I mean, all this stuff does, but like I said, you know, my, my grandparents came from Ukraine, uh, from that area, Ukraine, Poland, Russia. So, you know, we're practically Paisan. Yeah. You just <laughs> you know? missed the mustache. Yeah, there you go. I'll yeah, my you. girl, my girl won't let me grow a mustache and <laughs> beard. She's like, no. I, I actually, I have to tell you, I actually wore the purple today, specifically yeah. for, for Eugene. So yeah, the uh, yep. start wearing purple is like the best song. Yeah, uh, really, really tremendous. And if we could get him on a show, that would be so good. If he came out and played. Yeah, listen. If he's around, he'll he'll come through with his guitar. You know, that would be awesome. This is the this is the beard that's been outlawed. You know? Yeah, look at that. Yep, that's the beard that's been outlawed. Well, how long has it been since you had the beard? It's been a couple. That's a couple years. That's when I was shooting. I think that's when I was um, directing the Alago film. I think I had the uh -oh, beard. Okay. I had the beard when I did the Alago film for the last time. You know. Um, she likes you clean shaven. He should open the show this upcoming Saturday. Wow, that's a good idea, Brian. That would be Actually, that'd be amazing. They got they have too much on that bill already. They have that that bill's already that bill that bill is already stacked up. They, they got like a lot, you know. Billy, you know somebody somebody mentioned something about show two hundred, and uh -oh. you know what? Let me see if I can find it because. This was spot on. If I could find it, R RX seventy. Where is it? He said, "Okay." Much respects to Minor Threat. Who's the two hundredth episode? Evan Bio, Ian Minor Threat. Huh. He's he's pretty spot on. That guy. Ah, uh, you kind of nailed it, bro. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to get into it. But, but I think you just narrowed it down to two guys. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know. 
Yeah. Actually, wasn't yeah. yet? I think yesterday was Ian's birthday, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He was sixty yesterday. Wow, sixty. I'm gonna go shove <laughs> this soap up my ass. <laughs> it smells so good. Actually, I'm just being stupid. Then give it to the Patreons. I'm not shoving anything up my ass. Let's be frank. Nothing's going up my ass. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> world up my ass <laughs> this one's called soap up my ass actually did you ever see the uh the documentary about the gg allen family that was on well, uh, i'm not watching gg i don't want to i don't i don't give a, i'm not caring about i don't give a fuck about gg allen i believe the drummer did something with drumsticks and then sold them <laughs> great exit only <laughs> Thank you. I'm that kind of a guy, you know. I, I'm old fashioned. I don't want things. I don't want things stuck in my tushy, you know. I just, uh, you know. I know I'm kooky. I'm old. I like girls, you know. <laughs> I'm don't sniff it afterwards. Oh man, Evan did a good job on Toby's podcast. Listen, let me just say this: I've been talking a lot to both Evan and Ian Mackay. Okay, so. There's a dialogue going on between me and these guys. So, you know, it's all happening, man. There's, there's a lot of great shows coming up. We're going to continue to do great shows. So Who do we got do? for the 500 show? What's a 500 show? Could you imagine? You know who I also reached out for to, to the 200 show? Uh, and I, I think I could say this because um, it's not going to happen. But I, I did reach out to John Lydon. Ah, uh, see, that would be something. You know, he'll be two fifty. We'll save him for two fifty. I hear Satan's coming on the show. You know, Satan's been really easy to get in touch with. Wait, where's? You know what? Satan is coming on the show, and and you have to revise the flyer because we know exactly what date he's coming on. That's right. But this is this is going to be a really funny show. Satan is coming on, ruler of hell, swallower of souls, creator of rock and roll. Satan's coming on to tell us how he came up, what his influences are. Did he grow up in a musical household? You know, and he's, all got that stuff. he's got stories. He's got stories. Satan's got stories for miles. You know? Yep. It's it's not it's not show. There is a date. You have to revise the flight. We do have a date for this now. Yes, we do. And and this is going to be a very very funny show um a lot of work's going into this it's going to be very funny so you know well listen you know you got to give the devil his due right listen the devil went down to georgia bro he was That's looking right. for his, he was in a bind because he was way behind you know i mean is, is Satan's we, memories we, listen we can we're going to do a lot with this satan thing you know you do satan, like, hey, satan, what's happening the devil Satan, what's happening with this beef with you and Jesus? Like, is, is, that, <laughs> is that still happening? Yep. He was yep. having beef long before East Coast and West Coast rap, you know? Yeah, you know, number of the beasts. Like, Satan, like, the Rolling Stones thing. Yeah. You know, sympathy, sympathy for, the, for devil. the devil. Satanic majesty's yeah. request. Really? Number, you know? yeah, we, you could do a whole series on... Devil related. I bet a uh, fiddle of gold against your soul. You think you're better than me. Boy said, My name's Johnny. Hey, I got to shout out Stephen Oswald again. Stephen Oswald's the original drummer in the High and the Mighty. I grew up with him in the Bronx. Um, good to see you out there. Yeah, Georgia, right. Devil went down to, Devil went down to Georgia. Yep. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Charlie so, yeah, Daniels Band. Yo, you got to revise that flyer. Yeah, Actually, absolutely. You know, it's, it's Actually, the Satan show is show is episode one ninety nine, bro. Oh, okay. Yep. Wow. Thank thank you, X period the period Tina period X. Thank you, uh, thank you for chiming in so much. Um, oh, you're checking in now. You missed the great show, Gajuski. <laughs> it was a good one, bro. On and on south of heaven. You know. I wonder what Satan's favorite band really is. It's probably the, the Grateful, Carpenters. The Grateful Dead. <laughs> the Dead. The Grateful Dead. You He's know? probably a Michael Bolton fan. No, the other guy. What's his name? That dude with the curl. 
Oh, Kenny G. Everybody <laughs> loves Kenny G. What's shh, shh, shh. hey? I know I know what you're wondering. I'm wondering too. What's going on over at a hey, Sid? <laughs> Wake up, Sid. I see him. I see a hand. Come on, Sid. What are you doing, Sid? What are you taking a you, you sleeping it off, Sid? Is he is he alone? What are you doing, Sid? You getting blown, Sid? <laughs> it is Easter. Oh man. Oh man. Oh Motley Crew. Yo, yo, Stephen Oswald on point. Yeah, the, the Satan's favorite band is probably Motley Crew. Ugh. Bro, put your clothes on. What are you doing? Do, 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 do. <laughs> You're not getting me twice, Drew. I don't think so. Hey, hey, the uh, <laughs> the um, what do you call it? Um, Band of Gypsies went over great, Sid. That was good. I know it did, Drew. I know it did. Ah, it was that great. was the record. That's right. That's right. Uh, that was really what good. a what a invigorating nap that was. It was invigorating. Do you the just like do you like like listen to me in the background? You know. Yeah, it's 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 like white noise. You just go. The sound of white noise. That's a great album. Exactly. That was the sound of white noise. Oh, was the the first the record they did with Thomas? Is that what you talking that about? That was Anthrax with uh, with John Bush. John, that was that the first one they did with John Bush. Yeah, that record should have been gigantic, and it wasn't. You know, talking those guys, those two records, those first two records they were they did with John Bush were, were pretty damn good. Oh yeah. yeah, he's he's a phenomenal vocalist. He's one of my favorite metal vocalists. Is that right? Yeah, he's just you being a, you being a metal dude, right? Yeah, I'm on a I listen, I love my metal as much as I love my hardcore, you know. Yeah, I mean Satan's favorite favorite band has to be has to be Genesis. It has to be. <laughs> yeah, right. Or Billy Joel. I, no, you know what? Satan's just favorite despite, artist is Billy it's Billy just Joel. Despite you, Drew, of all people. By, by the way, if any if if anybody's wondering what we do in the pre-show when we do the pre-show thing and if you're a patron i put the link up a lot you can join us but basically this is what we do with it. This, this, is it. this is it this is it what we do with the pre-show chaos you know, yeah. and silliness stomp, stomp 442 was the, the the second record they did yes. with john yeah that was yeah. the second one with push if only only was on yeah. white noise yeah satan's well, favorite, he did, he did, satan's think, favorite band is striper Nah, that's probably I true. Don't that yep. that's probably true. Paul, it Paul. actually might be Gri it might be Grim Reaper. That's See you in hell, my friend. No, I bet it's the Grateful Dead. I would think. You know, place your bets now, gentlemen. You think yeah. Satan Love was a Yorma fan? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. Satan's See, probably a fan. Satan's a fan of like. You know what? I bet Satan's a big Danny Diablo fan. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> has to be. Satan well, loves. I, I will say this. Satan will loves. Say this, Satan though. loves Danny Diablo, Crown of Thorns, all that shit. You know. But the one thing you you know we always hear people saying when somebody uh especially does Satan like Concrete Dream? Boy, let's not Oof. even get into that on Oof. here, man. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's not. But, but Satan, gentlemen, the Beatles. It's got to be the Beatles. Gentlemen, I must Elvis ask you this though. What? Speaking speaking of older older bands, you know how a specific musician might pass away. Oh, but Keith Richards is still alive. He's his soul keeps going. Eh, I don't believe that for two fucking seconds. Chucky Dude. Brown says Satan's favorite band is Deicide. Eh. Ah. See, look, the fact yeah, Keith mm -hmm. Richards will live forever. I call bullshit on that because you know who's got to outlive him? Nunes yes, <laughs> Bill Wyman. I was gonna say Charlie Harper. Bill Wyman's 85 and he's still kicking. Yeah. And his wife is, I think, not even 40. Now we know the secret, guys. Hey, Paul, these are questions that we're definitely we're gonna when we do the Satan thing, these are like the kind of this is the kind of stuff we're gonna do. Questions like Satan, that. Satan you know? encourages crowd participation. Yeah. Satan's funny, he's a funny dude. So all right, fellas. Just all right, then. We had Vlad on too. Vlad made an appearance. That was cool. Vlad's one of the good ones. Yeah. All right, uh, Sid. I'll talk to you later. All righty.
Steven, Eddie's go upstairs Eddie's. for uh, go upstairs for some uh what do you call it? Antipasta? Actually, we just had a little coffee. We had a little limoncello. You limoncello? know, limoncello. What is that? It's like an Italian uh, liqueur. Like Peter Lemoncello? Like Peter Lemoncello. Wow. I'm impressed. My, <laughs> my he... mom actually went to see Peter Lemoncello. Yeah, he's like some Guinea singer, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> all right. Wow. All right. Lemoncello. I don't know what a Lemoncello is. Is that like flan? Is limoncello and flan like cultures? I wonder about this. Um, my bakery makes a great limoncello. I know nothing about this limoncello thing. It's probably like Sam Buka. Is that a dude? Sam's on the phone. Sam Buka. <laughs> All right. That said, nice show, long show. Um, is that what it is? Flan Wars. Shouting out Frankie too far. DJing in the park. We'll see you in the park on Saturday. Um, that said, hey, thanks a lot, everybody. Great show. Um, these are trying times we live in. Um, all our prayers to our friends in the Ukraine. Let's just hope it doesn't end in nuclear world, right? Fucking scary shit, man. So that said, thanks a lot, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Until then, do good things, and good things will come to you. Yeah.